to episode 7 of the True Gamer Podcast, the podcast hosted by two gamers for you, the True Gamers. I'm one of your hosts, Eddie, along with the inverted gamer himself, Sheps. How's it going, bro? It's going great. How's it going, man? It's going good to me, man. I swear, well, I'm feeling energized right now, purely because we've got so much goddamn good news to talk about after so many, many, many months of waiting. PlayStation have finally come out and they're going to show us something, which is going to be obviously the topic of the show today. <laughs> yeah. How, are you excited about that? Are you excited about that, bro? <laughs> Am I excited about the PS5, basically? Hmm, let's think. <laughs> Let me just... Yeah, move. I think... I- uh, you know, I'll give it. You know, I'll give it a four out of ten. Oh you yeah, know? you know, yeah, I'm yeah realistic, I'm, right? Realistic. I'm, I'm staying chill about this. Yeah, I'm not like <laughs> just tearing my hair out. Like, when are we going to see this thing? It's, I can't wait this week. How how about week, how, right? how about that? Yeah, it's about like six days, something like that. How about this uh, PS5 possible reveal in comparison to uh, a brand new Fast and Furious movie coming out? Let's say. Well, I mean, come on. There's no comparison, right? Come yeah, on. That's exactly. just a fair Fast and Furious movies, obviously. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, yes, today is the True Gamer Podcast, the podcast for all kinds of gaming stuff from your bros here at the Combro Palations channel. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, uh, before we get any further into this, let's first of all thank all of our super bros, our super patrons who support us over at patreon.com forward slash Combro Stations. Those bros are Saki, the one and only, Comrade Conrad, Diogo Dildo, Record. Friction, Catsper the Friendly Patron, Dan the Man, Jeremy Renner, and Catsper the Friendly Patron again because he forgot he accidentally subbed to us twice in one month. But <laughs> what, <you> a legend. <laughs> what a legend. Thank you, bros, for keeping the lights, the mics on, and the gaming going here at Combro Platians. That's right. That's right. What do we want to talk about first? Yeah, so we got we got a couple of topics. Let me just list them out for the bros for the everybody out there. Our topics today include the dual sense controller, possibly having a cool attachment with a mm-hmm. wireless charging and, and buttons on the back. Uh, the games, the PS5 games that have been confirmed so far for the console, Xbox's backwards compatibility plan, and apparently the next console will have thousands of compatible games at launch. Interesting wording there. Okay, yeah. Uh, and the topic of the show, which is that PlayStation have announced their first PS5 reveal, possibly going to be gameplay. We're not sure. First teal right, tease right now on the 4th of June. Okay, okay. Um, and just before we talk about that one, which is going to be the topic of the show, I want to say thank you to all of our true gamers out there, our true gamers who sub to us at the $5 level, who actually made this podcast possible. We didn't start it until these guys said, we want it, we will even back you. Those people are Record Friction, Saki, Conrad Gabriel, Red Crown Crane, Katzba Coral is shagging on top of a hippogriff. <laughs> What the hell's that? Uh, Max H, Dan, Jeremy Hard, uh, Alex, Adam Sunling, Furious Coco, Fishy, and Benedict Clubbers. Thank you, true gamers, for being yeah, so awesome. Yeah, thank man. you, boys. I uh, did. You, have you been like hitting the caffeine or something? You are on it. I haven't even had the chance to like find the break to be like. And this is brought to you by amazing patrons over patreon.com <laughs> conversations. Like you just you're you're banging out. You're banging out. Just. I'll just go, bro. Do the whole podcast. Like, Mate, solo do, it. Do you know what? It's going to have to be a solo podcast. I've had two relentlesses already. One in the when I woke up. Have you up really? And, yes, I have. <laughs> okay. See, I was kind of, I was like, I wonder why he's so on it. That that explains it. Completely guessed it. Like, that, is, that, it that, is it caffeine or is it, it sounds like it's caffeine or it could be cocaine. It could be one of those right, two. One, one or the other. <laughs> why not both? Let's kick it off with the topic of the show, guys. The ones that everybody's going to want to tune in for. The big one here. The Fast and Furious movie, yeah? A Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> PlayStation have announced that June 4th, they're going to do a reveal event and they're welcoming everyone to see the future of gaming on PlayStation 5. Tell us how you, your initial reactions of that, my bro. Which one is this? I feel like I've... I almost feel like I've done this podcast already. Almost. What, which, yeah, which... um. <laughs> We won't talk about that. Which uh, which announcement is this? This is their. Is this the one where we think it's going to be all gameplay? 
this that's what we think we don't know yeah. exactly there was a rumor prior to this that was uh from jason Schreier and a couple of other people that's or right. B. they were saying they said june 3rd so they were a day off by that but they were saying that this event is going to be all gameplay it's going to show predominantly first party stuff uh running on a playstation 5 we don't have any information as to other than it's going to be about an hour long, they said. We don't have any other information than that. I mean, uh, that's a pretty big running on a PlayStation 5. That's better than the Xbox one, right? Exactly. I mean, they, they had roughly... It was just under an hour there, one. But we have to see what the content will be. Because so far, if this is a gaming reveal event for the PlayStation, which, again, we don't know. It's just a rumor mm -hmm. at the moment. If it is, then it's poised to be exactly what the Xbox conference was poised... Uh, you know, position to be before we realize right. that actually it's not gameplay and and it's all just cg cutscenes and mm -hmm. and stuff like that um i'm excited what are your predictions for what we might be seeing at this console event what games wise games wise or anything in fact anything that comes to your mind what are you excited for bro i could do with a new ratchet and clank that would be yeah. a banger a ratchet and clank would be good maybe um maybe some cyberpunk stuff but it feels like xbox is is paying the bills for that. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe something for Ghost or some last something from The Last of Us. I think I think we're close enough that they won't do The Last of Us. Yeah, I think they've kind of done that. They did their state of play, right? I feel like mm. that would be like, okay, this is The Last of The Last of Us you're going to get. Or you get this, what I said there. Uh, last of The Last of Us. I think yeah, it's yeah. pretty much done from there on out. Yeah, so I think that's out. Something from Ghost, maybe. Ghost yeah. of Tsushima. But again, I feel like... We just got something pretty major. We got 18 minutes, what, like two weeks ago? So That's true. That's true as well, so yeah. So probably not that. I mean, are there any, like, smaller exclusive things? Maybe um, maybe they're going to tease something that... Uh, I mean, what big PlayStation names? We, I'm, actually gonna, I'm actually going to rope in a couple of... So the, okay. the, the theory is that apparently there's going to be a lot of uh, first-party stuff there, which is good. Okay. That's, the, that's the rumor. We don't know for sure. But I'm going to rope in one of the, the other topics as well, which is the uh, incoming PlayStation 5 games that have been confirmed already to be on PlayStation, which we're probably likely going to see here at the first mm -hmm. PlayStation 5 event, right? There are some games here like uh, like Dauntless. We've seen a little bit of Dauntless. Maybe we'll see that running on a PlayStation 5. Yeah. Godfall. Godfall has been teased for a very long time. We saw that leaked gameplay of Godfall as well, which looked fantastic. Seeing that running will probably be fantastic. Uh, Quantum Error, which is uh, a, a, apparently supposed to be teased as a Doom meets Control type game. Very okay. interested in that as well. Yeah. Um, and a couple of other games, we're probably going to see things like Call of Duty and whatnot, and possibly the next Battlefield game. Possibly the next mm -hmm. Battlefield game. What is your dream for what's going to happen? Here? Give me your pie in the eye in the sky sort of predictions where you're like, oh my god, if this happened, I would jizz my pants right now. Give me something like that. Uh, I have two. Go ahead. I'm just trying to see. God damn it, Corey. <laughs> I've. He's, there's just so much he's been retweeting recently because of all these riots in Milwaukee. He's so and stuff. active. He's so active yeah. on Twitter. I, I was about to say, I was thinking about PS exclusives. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, God of War. And I'm trying to see if he's even mentioned this thing. But it, there's like the last hundred tweets have been, or retweets or something. I can't I'll find anything. I'll help you actually, because I actually responded to his tweet. So okay. when this uh, tweet came up from PlayStation saying, join us Thursday, June 4th at 1 p.m. Pacific time, blah, blah, blah. Um, he quote tweeted it and wrote oh what's this then hmm that's interesting don't play with my heart Corey. that's exactly what i said i was like don't do this Corey. if you're not there if you're not showing off something i'll cry live on stream i swear to god <laughs> yeah i mean well i see a retweet neil Druckmann says he's stoked but i just don't know if they're gonna do last week. like we just had a big last of us reveal so i don't think so um my big thing if all the games are there, do you remember? I think it was for PS4. They had uh, Shihei Yoshida playing on a controller, and we could see that the light from the uh, the DS4. Yeah. But that was kind of it. Mm -hmm. Like, imagine they have something like that on stage, and they're like, oh, this was a great game, and it was played on this, and they just pull out from the side like a, a, a PS5. It's, like, oh. it's just there. Just like, boom, just wheeled out, you know? Like, there's a the guy like, oh, here's some live footage. Oh, hold on. Um, oh, let me just reset it, and they just turn it on and off or something you know like it's physically oh. there 
Oh, bro. I would I would jizz my pants live right there. Like, I mean, right. we're going to be doing a, a live reaction, which is uh, already set up. You can head over to the Combo Relations channel. You're probably already there right now, unless you're listening on podcast services around the world. Um, That's right. But we're going to do a live reaction to that, obviously, one of the coolest events obviously. of the year. And if that happens, I'm I'll, I'll just... I'll just pass out right here. I'll be like, oh my God, I've seen the console. I can now go. See you later. Bye. <laughs> yeah, like, I feel like if you're PlayStation, if you're Sony, you have two moves. One is you do it now, right? Because we, you're going to have all the attention. People want to see. Xbox has been a bit of a disaster so far, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a great place to reveal it in, like, in a way that they haven't done before because they, they're kind of changing up the script, right? Yeah. The other way to do it is they wait like another month, six weeks before we get anything, you know, before because they don't have to, right? Because yeah. we saw um, we saw the Unreal Engine five demo, they and they were very very specific that this is running on a PS five, right? Not some rig, not not some PlayStation, that's not some computer that's made to the same standards. No, this is a PlayStation five. This is PS five, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in a in a weird way, that was a tech demo for us. And kind of a gameplay demo. Like we've seen the power that it has. Yeah. Um, we got 18 minutes of Ghost of Tsushima. And yep, we did. Uh, what was it like? Eight minutes of or seven minutes of The Last of Us a few minutes ago. So we've had. We haven't seen anything from the PlayStation itself, but we've seen a lot about it. And so far, everything we've seen has been good. And really I was quite good. loud about being concerned for The Last of Us too. From what we've seen. Which again, it didn't touch on the story or any of that. It could still suck. It looked like a good old fashioned revenge story. It looks good. The gameplay looks good. Um, Ghost of Tsushima looks amazing. The yes. Unreal Engine Five looked in insane. So oh, from that, orgasmic. from that, mate, the PS Five looks like an absolute beast. Yeah, an and we haven't beast. even seen the console yet. We haven't actually right. seen anything as well from them too. Like it's not been, hey, okay, guys, here's the here's some gameplay from PS5 from PlayStation. It's just been what we've learned tangentially from other people and surrounding exactly. PlayStation. That's a very very good sign so far. Yeah. It um, is, I, but because of that though, just just to wrap that thought yeah. up, is because we've seen it from other people that it's bought Sony time. They can go another four to six weeks, I reckon, before they show us anything. Oh, boy. You know, and I don't want it to go that way, but I yeah. think they've got the room without, you know, damaging the, the sort of like the way they're handling people's attention, you know? I think there's a, I think that's true as well. I think they could, they could definitely hold out for a bit more. Like we said, we don't, like you just said as well, I don't feel like that I want that to happen. The perfect way that I see this going, the way that I would love for this to go, is I would love for it to be, Okay, guys, here's some games. They show a couple of first-party games. They show, mm -hmm. let's say, a tease for God of War. They show a tease for Horizon Zero Dawn 2 or Horizon 1 oh, Dawn, as you yeah. say. Mate, they that's sh a shout. I didn't even right? think about that. They yeah. show off, I don't know, one other uh, PS4, ex P sorry, PS5 exclusive that maybe we haven't heard of. They show a couple of third-party games like Call of Duty, etc. And then at the end, they go, guys, we're really looking forward to this console coming out this holiday. And this is what the console looks like, like you said, and just wheel it out, and then yeah, they yeah. just show the console for like a solid minute, just panning around it, and you're like, beautiful PlayStation Mate. logo off, and then they don't say anything else about if, it until if like they the next end event. It, yeah, if they end it where it's like, and all of that amazing gameplay was played on this, and just yes. wheel it out, right? That's or if it's it. like, um, like they have a cyberpunk thing, like something we haven't seen, something small, and then it like glitches out. Mm -hmm, and they're like, mm -hmm. hold on, what's up? And they're like, you know, pull off the, the cover or something and it's a PS5. And then it oh. cuts to like all the, you know, all the promo footage where it spins around and does all that stuff on the big screen. Yeah. Either one of those, that's how you reveal this thing. Or you wait a week. Like, I don't see it, I don't see it being in between it. They're either doing it now or it's getting its own thing in six weeks. God, I can't wait for this. I can't wait for this event. Let me give you a little bit more information surrounding this <clears throat> surrounding this announcement that came out. Yeah. So, um, tell me, bro. Just after the uh, just after it got announced, there was a couple of interesting factors basically about this because Sony were the ones that pulled out of E3 last year and were the first people to say they weren't going to be going to E3 this year, and they're doing this reveal event pretty much on the day that E3 would have been. Mm -hmm. If they uh, if they had gone to E3, which is quite interesting, I feel like. Um, also, with that, the console, sorry, the controller that was shown off in this teaser video 
announcing this event. I'm putting it up on the screen so everyone can see right now, so everyone can take a look at it and give me their opinions. What color do you think this controller is? <sighs> okay, so... I'm gonna say it's black. I'm gonna say this is like. Do you remember that? Um, is the go, is the dress like blue or gold? Yeah, yeah. yeah or are they yeah. saying uh, <laughs> Laurel or Yanni? What, those things. I think yeah. this is one of those. The, my, okay, my question to you is this: Do you think this has been done like this on purpose, or is it someone's just not as good as they thought they were in Cinema 4D or whatever <laughs> this is? You know, possibly. When I first saw it, I, I immediately thought I saw a black controller. That's what I. Th- first yeah, saw that's and i put it up on twitter and people didn't correct me they didn't say anything but then in our discord server which by the way you can join by clicking the link in the description best place in the world to be genuinely yeah um people are saying no no it's a white controller and they're showing more like there's a, a bit at the beginning where it's sort of like it's I reflecting just, the light as you've been speaking i've been just playing this on repeat watching it and i see what they see there are some moments, right? Yeah. And I see also what they see as well. But I'm not 100% convinced. I don't know what it yeah. is. We will it's, have to see. It's the but... light bars. Yeah. It's yeah. the light bars. If it was a white controller, it would it would reflect different off the white, you know? I think this is just someone decided to go for, like you said, like someone was in Cinema 4D and they tried to make like a, a cinematic style look with a funky light. And yeah, it didn't yeah. quite reflect well. It could very well be a uh, a, a black controller. Yeah. I think at the moment I'm going to say it's the, the weird lighting that they've done in this thing. But let us know, guys, in the chat, in the live chat and in the, uh, the chat below, the comment section below, what you guys think. Because we need to settle this before. Because there could be a whole new skew. We've had predictions mm. all along that there might be a black version and a white version coming yeah, up. Yeah, that would be so sick. So the big thing that I'm actually noticing about this, I do think it's black. I think it's gloss black. Ooh. You know, and like in the right light, really deep, shiny black can look white. Um, what I'm noticing, I've just paused it on the on the opposite side of the D-pad. There's no, at least in this version of things, there's no color on the buttons. So the square and triangle and stuff. Yep. And I'm just, I can't, but except when it tilts, it does look like there's a second a flash of color. And oh, then it looks like, say. <laughs> it looks like the PlayStation logo, you know, that cutout is, yeah. is colorless as well in this. But it, is that, is it color in there? <laughs> I'm trying to watch I think it. We're, we're trying to watch it live, but like it's a, so terrible, isn't yeah, it? It's so hard to do. <laughs> yeah. I think we just, I want to see one, um, I think we need to, I was going to say, get our hands on a DS5. Like, if we could, hells yeah. But um, <laughs> I think we need to physically see one. I think I, I want to see one in someone's hand actually being played, you know, and then have an actual look at a physical unit. Um, yeah, we might get to do that if uh, if EGX goes ahead this year. We've been speaking, obviously, with... We've been going to EGX for a while. Uh, mm-hmm. That's where we've had... When it was the last console generation, that's where I got my first hands-on with it. Mm-hmm. And I did a whole, like, recording a video to show people, like, what it's like from multiple angles, etc. And... Uh, if EGX does go ahead this year, which is still possible because it's late in the year, yeah, that will be a really cool time to see it. And we can also meet up with a, a load of the bros as well and have like a, a good yeah. time and whatnot, celebrate some That gaming. will be good. Wasn't there something, as we're talking about the DS5, weren't there patents or something that we were... One of the, yes, wasn't that one of your that, topics. That is one of the topics. Let me um, let me let's talk about that now. Since we're on the damn topic of the mm-hmm. of the uh, controller right here, uh, so the controller we got some pattern leaks for an attachment for the Dual Sense controller here. Now, this is completely unverified at this time. It's just a pattern that's come out. It doesn't mean that a it's gonna come to fruition. It doesn't mean that Sony are actually gonna make this thing. But it is a very cool thing. It's an attachment that goes on the back of the DualSense controller, has a flat edge on it, which enables it to be wirelessly charged using a wireless charging pad. Yeah. As well as that cool thing, which is, is quite decent. I, I like the, the look of that and I like wireless charging. It's very futuristic and whatnot. As well as that, it apparently has a battery built into this pack. So it will extend okay. the battery life of your controller. And crucially, 
It has two buttons on the back of the controller, an X and an O button that you can nice. use instead of taking your thumbs off of the sticks. Yeah. How cool is that, bro? That's that's pretty good. I want to know the price on it, though. Like, I mean, if I was Scuff, I'm worried. You know. Yes, they essentially just wiped out Scuff uh, Scuff's whole like uh, business model with just one attachment. <laughs> I just I wonder what the price is going to be. Like, I like that it's got a battery. Presumably, oh. it's like a battery pack, I would guess, like additional battery. Yeah, I presume um, it's like the same battery that's inside the controller, just inside right, just, that, right? And doubles the life, basically, something yeah. like that. Um, the big thing, I, th I wonder how expensive it's going to be with that wireless charging feature, which is cool, I guess, but mm -hmm. I'm never going to use it, right? I'm only interested in it for the pads. Yeah. Um, like, if this is... Twenty dollars, twenty pounds, something like that, somewhere in that range. Mm -hmm. Hell, I'm getting this all day, every day. Yeah. Um, I, oh, okay, one thing we've actually covered a lot of Sony patents. Yes. Um, <laughs> on the main channel. Loads of things Previ like PSVR two and controllers right? and things like that. Yeah. All sorts of things, and nine times out of ten, didn't we even cover? They did uh, a little gaming friend thing that would sit next to you while you gamed. Do you oh, that the, one? Uh, it's a bit like the the old Microsoft paperclip thing. It was basically yeah. like a, a PlayStation version. I was like, get <laughs> away! No one likes you, Clippy. <laughs> right. Like the thing with those is that a lot of times they patent stuff just to have it, just to patent it, just so somebody else can't do it. Mm. Right. Um, like we've probably covered. I think we've covered maybe like four or maybe maybe six, and one we think is coming out. You know, it's the PSVR two. Yeah. You know. So it, it could just be something that they're trying to keep away from Xbox. You know, like the basic idea. I don't know what the actual tech and stuff in the pattern is. Hopefully it's something they're actually thinking of. Because, mate, if you can get like your, your DualShock 5 with this back attachment and, you know, like, mate, get it like custom painted or something, you know, like, um, like the, in fact, someone put it in the Discord this morning. I pinned it in the main chat. Um, the Conversations yeah, the, branded DS5s. Mate, that's right. Mate, they look so good. So let me just uh, say, let, let me give you my thoughts on this first of all. So people, for people that don't know, these back attachments, I'm putting the pictures up on the screen of the patterns and stuff like that. The uh, They have the X and the O button down below where your fingers sort of naturally rest behind the controller. The mm -hmm. whole idea for this, in case you don't know, this was originally an idea from like pro esports controllers that were like modded by professional companies. So you could press buttons on the say like the the face buttons the, the x o uh, x o uh, triangle and square without actually having to take your thumbs off of the stick so you could just push those back buttons instead to do yeah. things like knifing or jumping or whatever it might be now that was such a good idea that xbox made their own line of uh pro controllers they're like pro series controllers which are insanely expensive but apparently very very good quality um there is also some issues there are some um, when I say good quality, I mean they feel hefty and they've got good p button presses, but apparently they do have a quality of, uh, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? How long they last. The, the right, life right. of them are, are a bit low, but I'm not sure on that. I've never personally tried it. Yeah, I mean, I had to scuff them for the PS3 and that thing lasted ages, you know? It didn't so, wear so out. So this thing is essentially, so the company that we're, we're mentioning, Scuff, is the company that would make these modded controllers. And it was huge back in the PS3 days and then PS4 days as well. Mm -hmm. Except they are very, very expensive as well. They're like 120, 130, 140, 50, even 150 pounds even. Yeah, I think so, you struggle to get one under 100. Yeah, it's really, really expensive. Especially because the price of controllers are expensive anyway, like 50 mm -hmm. quid pop for yeah. each one. PlayStation not too long ago came out with a DualShock 4 attachment that gave you back buttons as well. And it plugged into the bottom of the controller. If you have one of the controllers, it's that, yeah. that funky little exit hole at the bottom. And it was only £20, that one. So mm -hmm. for £70 all in, you could have a controller with those back buttons. And that was a really brand cool. brand new one, yeah. This seems to be an evolution of that, including wireless charging and an extra battery pack. A battery pack that people have been saying, you know, DualShock 4 has a really low battery life. I've got uh, anything in my house runs for longer than the DualShock 4. All that kind of stuff. So this could be really, really fascinating. This could be really cool. I will say, on that, you know, running batteries down thing, 
I agree. The DualShock has a pretty atrocious uh, battery life, especially yeah. after you've had it for a couple of years. But the like, I saw an ad for a Chromebook, and it was like, "Oh, it has like a twelve-hour battery life. Like, don't have to charge all the time." Yeah, but what the people that are worried about charging all the time run their stuff down to two percent on yeah. all the time. Like, it just because it's longer doesn't mean they're not gonna. They're just gonna go longer between. They're still gonna run it down, and it's gonna take longer to charge up. Um, but yeah, I do think having a longer battery life is a good thing. I just, I hope this stays in that same window of like the twenty, maybe thirty dollars. I hope so too. I mean, the, from the images, it doesn't look like it's too sophisticated. It has those buttons and it has the wireless charger and a battery yeah. pack. It doesn't look like there's much more to it. I hope that it is very simple. I think that PlayStation is smart enough to go for something yeah. that is simple and cheap like that. But I guess we'll have to see when that comes out. That's like uh, if, that's going to be something. If, if there was a second option where it's like, oh, here's one with the wireless charging, that's $30. But here's one where it's it plugs into the plug-in and then it's got that same jack on the back so you can charge the whole lot you know, by a wire and it doesn't have the wireless charging function and it's just a battery pack with the pads. Yeah. That you never have to take off. Like that's the one I'm gonna get if it's cheaper for sure. But yeah. it's cool. It's really cool. And I like the idea of like customizing your controllers and stuff, you know? Yeah, I mean, especially because and this is something that Sony, if you're not gonna do, you're fucking leaving money on the table. Mm -hmm. We uh, as soon as they revealed the controller, the th like thirty seconds later, the entire internet was flooded with custom controllers, paint jobs, and all these other types of color yeah. schemes. Didn't even have to be su some of them were super sophisticated, and some of them obviously wouldn't be possible. And they'd have to be like done by a professional painting company. But some of them were super simplistic, simply just two different colors because it's two tone now. The controller mm -hmm. and they looked gorgeous even our boy uh, uh nirok who made our ones the conversations branded ones my god they look cool they and look so good if we could somehow get those we'd get one for a giveaway oh, we'd get one for yeah. us for one for me one for absolutely. you absolutely and we'd get absolutely. one for the back as well so we'd probably spunk yeah. like a good 150 quid on yeah, controllers. Easily. i mean i'd have to get one in the conversations orange i'd have to get one with a true gamer on it yeah. you know <laughs> a, a ps you know with the playstation master race one like so mm -hmm. many good things to go on these and I just don't see why they aren't doing it because it can't be that expensive and especially because they've started doing direct to consumer you know like you can now yeah. buy a PS4 from Sony like why not have it on the site where it's like oh you know you buy the, the PS5 cool uh, DualShock 5 right or DualSense 5 the like, customization oh cool yeah I'd like to put the, the back paddles on it yeah that's 10 um, oh I want to change you know, if I'm going to have the, you know, the under molding that's black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I'm going to have that black, but I want my the joysticks and the R buttons, you know, R1, R2 and all that to be gray. Yeah, you know? yeah. And okay, that's only $2. And yeah, look, I want $2 for the color in my, you know, triangle and circle and all that. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to do the over molding with my certain thing. That's an extra $20. And before you know it, you've made an extra like $70 on a controller. But because you're buying all this stuff together, you don't even notice it, you know? That's the thing. The uh, the Xbox uh, controller labs that they have, where you can literally go and go to their website and customize your controller and order all kinds of ridiculous combinations and whatnot. They must make a killing on those. And if right. PlayStation, who have the most consoles out there in the world, the most the biggest fan base. If they offered that kind of thing, I'm sure they'd make tons of money. Now, I don't think that Sony would go all out into the full customization area right away. They might do it further down the line. But even then, you could come up with a couple of, like, say, five really good color options that you've mm -hmm. decided are the best, that you that perfectly represent and doesn't dilute the, the brand, you know, how, how brands always think and stuff yeah. like that. And then put those on sale, see how they do, and then go for it. Yeah. It's co it's not confirmed yet that they're not doing this, obviously, because the controller isn't out yet. Mm -hmm. And maybe they've seen the light after everybody did these cool things. I mean, I, I absolutely hope that you, you're on to something. You're at least a black and a white one. Like, why not? Yeah. Uh, like, how about a black and a white console day of release yeah. with black and white controllers included? Right. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I, for, to be honest, I would take the white one for the record. Yeah, I like um, the white one. I like the one they've shown off so far. It's really yeah. nice. <laughs> It looks really good. But you um, know what trumps them all? A PlayStation 1 Grey. Oh. Yeah, buddy. Oh, That's baby. what I'm talking about. This is the thing. <laughs> like, why not Why not have, like, your standard options? You've got, like, black, white, grey, blue, red. Boom. You know, your major branding colours. A yeah. grey one, which is in between. And red and blue, like, the 
perfect, you know, like just see if those do any, like, I just, I don't see why you wouldn't offer the option to like upload your image. You can have like an image of your like cat or your, you know, your girlfriend or something. <laughs> if you, know? you have a girlfriend or a cat, one of the two, you know, right, exactly. <laughs> or a waifu pillow, whatever it is, you know, right, whatever. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Chefs are going to be ordering that one. Get um, a Deku branded uh, DualShock Five. <laughs> you weeb. <laughs> um, all right, yeah. So that's the uh, the attachment that's been uh, the pattern leak anyway. That's come from the Dual Sense. Um, it seems really cool. We don't know again if it's going to happen. It may never happen. But based on the success, or at least the the great reception of the the back panel attachment for the Dual Shock Four. I can't yeah. imagine that they're, they're, they're going, oh, you know, that was a complete failure. We don't like it. We're not going to do it right now. I, I mean, can't imagine that. If 1% of their tar- of their market wants it, that's a million units. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's 1%. Um, same with the, with, with the custom paint job type stuff. You know, if 1% of people, it's a million. Yeah. Why wouldn't you... That's, that's a lot of business. That know? is a lot of business. If it's twenty dollars, it's twenty million dollars. Ryan, if you're listening to this, you you need to you need to take note. You need to take note. Right. All right. Um, going back to the PlayStation reveal, the PlayStation okay. announcement that was making here, because we had a few more things to talk about there. Oh, do we? Um, My bad. No, it's all right. It's fine. It's all a podcast. This is what it's all about. Um, so apparently, this is coming from Jason Schreier. Apparently, Sony was so paranoid of any leaks happening that they didn't tell their developers that there was even a PlayStation uh, Five reveal event going this week at all. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't tell anything that this is the first time that they heard of anything which is quite funny to think about they don't even tell the people that are showing off their games that there's going to be a reveal anytime soon sounds like there'll be a ps5 reveal to me it sounds like it right no no, no, there is definitely going to be one it's just that they weren't they weren't aware of it which is quite funny which is quite funny just because does does that not sound like they're gearing up to show the console to you you know it does to me you know it could it could, and the the rumors are right now that the uh, the PlayStation Five is going into mass production very soon, and before you do that, you have to show off the console because somebody is gonna take a picture of that console, and it's gonna be in the most unflattering way, and they're just gonna release it out on the internet, and it's gonna take all the buzz away from your reveal. So if you're a smart company, you do that soon, and that this could be it. This could be it, guys. Get hyped. Get hyped. All right. <laughs> Um, another thing. So, go on. You were going to say something there? No, just it's hype. It, I'm. This could be a really, really great. <laughs> event, Are you getting excited, you know? bro? Fuck, I love it. Yeah, yeah it, it, it really could be. As long as they. <sighs> this is the thing. It's like Microsoft goes first, right? Or has gone first for a while. Yeah. They can see exactly what not to do. Just literally, don't do what they done did. Yeah. And you and you do well, right? And we've been saying for ages that in this thing that one they should ideally show something and two any demo go look under your seats go on the psn store now it's right and here now. here's your demo like we're giving you demo codes right because yeah. everybody everybody's in now now's the time to to test your demos and get real good stress testing on this stuff yeah you know especially because everyone's locked at home and whatnot and they right all exactly we've home. we've all got the time now you know yeah. Speaking of um, of uh, Xbox and their and their event in comparison to Sony, Sony apparently have seen the backlash from Microsoft or that their marketing got for their first major reveal uh, as a gameplay event and uh, revealing like CG trailers and in-game cutscenes and stuff like that. In response, Sony have been saying this is a uh, Ryan Holt who's been uh, speaking to I think it was CNET. He was saying. Uh, for this first reveal event, we want to show off PlayStation 5 games that are actually running on real hardware when showing mm-hmm. off the games for the first time. Not any sort of in-game cutscenes or anything like that, or running off a dev kit, but running on actual PlayStation hardware, which is super exciting. I cannot wait for something like that. Yeah, um, that's exactly what we want to see exactly what we want to see i hope they don't flub it because this is all all these words are so good right now and all these like little quotes they're so perfect i just hope it's not like yeah yeah deliver the wall deliver the wall and i dropped it up oh, sorry sorry about that sorry about that guys yeah, i dropped yeah, that yeah absolutely 
And one final thing, apparently, The Last of Us Part 2, this is again from Ryan Holt, which is uh, who is the CEO of PlayStation, in that same interview, he said that The Last of Us Part 2 um, ha- hasn't got any other announced plans at the moment to increase the visuals or anything like that when it comes to the PlayStation 5, which to me kind of sounds like there is plans, but he just doesn't want to confirm it right now. Um, but apparently, The Last of Us 2 runs perfectly at the moment, on a PlayStation 5 without issue, which is really good news to, to hear. Yeah, I mean, it's it would be a surprise if it didn't. You know, right? It's <laughs> like, know? actually, so Last of Us 2 ain't running too good right now on our new console. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I guess it's because it's 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 not the same game, right? Depending on which console that game, that disc goes into, you're going to be getting a different patch, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess what they're saying is it runs... But it ran real good on the PS5, you know? Yeah. Also, apparently, uh, they've been... PlayStation are urging people from the 13th of July onwards, any game that comes out for the PlayStation 4 needs to be certified also to be working with the PlayStation 5 also. Which means that all these... um, The smart delivery system from Xbox... uh, is This is essentially the same thing where they say, okay, your con almost the same thing anyway, where you need to make sure that this game runs both on a PlayStation 4 and a PlayStation 5, confirming like forward compatibility whenever you, if you ever get a PlayStation 5, which is a cool little bit of news right there. Mm-hmm. Let's kick it over to some of our bros. We had a couple of questions regarding this PlayStation 5 uh, event right here. This first one is from Rohit Tiger. What's happening, bro? He says, what games do you expect at the PS5 rumored event? This was before when it was a rumor. And what games do you want for the launch of the PlayStation 5? You take it, bruv. What are you looking for? I am looking for, I, honestly, if I can just see a tease of God of War, the next one, the one that Cory Borlaug so smartly uh, decrypt, uh, sorry, cri- he, how did he do it? He put like a series of tweets and the first letter of every single tweet yeah, were yeah, yeah, spelled yeah. out uh, God of War Ragnarok or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I want to see a tease of God of War. That's all I want to see right there. If I can see that, then I'll be happy because I'll know that they're working on something that I can, that I know I'm going to enjoy because we love that yeah. brand. We love Cory Borlaug's direction. It's so great. The launch what about game. Release? Yeah. yeah, the launch game that I want to see. I mean, obviously, a Superman game. Obviously, that's that's obviously, obviously. one of them. And that is coming, obviously. Definitely not a, a, a dream of mine. Definitely not that. Um, I think the next one is going to be Horizon Zero Dawn sequel. I think that's the the most realistic one. I think if they can do that at launch, don't get me wrong, we haven't heard any rumors about it. Even I mean, we guessed there's a sequel because the first was such a success, but we haven't heard anything else other than that maybe that it's going to be a co-op game and that is Mm -hmm. it. But that is like so basic knowledge. Like it could be initial conception sort of like days and whatnot. I feel like we would have seen a leak if it was anywhere near that ready. You know? Possibly. I mean, I'm with you on that. But wouldn't it be amazing if they can just surprise reveal? They could just be like, guess what, guys? We've got a full 20-minute gameplay trailer of Horizon Zero Dawn sequel. It's got this. It's got that. It's running ray tracing. And it's available at launch. Go mad, everyone. Yeah, that... Okay. Look yeah, under yeah, your that, seats. Be, it's right there. there you go. <laughs> that would be pretty sick. Not gonna lie, that would be pretty sick. Yeah. How about you? Do you have any sort of feelings or what you want to see? What you might remind see? remind me what the question was exactly again. <laughs> so it's basically, what do you expect to see at the PS5 rumored event? Yeah, so yeah. not necessarily games, but uh, anything. And also, what game do you want at launch of the PlayStation 5? I think at the event, I want to see the God of War thing. Would be sick. I think I'm probably expecting <sighs> Cyberpunk if they could strike a deal with them unless Microsoft really paid high for exclusivity. Which I kind of feel they did. I feel like Me- they, they're desperate over there, so I think they would have dropped a large check on yeah. their table. Me too. Um, so Cyberpunk would be the thing I would, would probably go for, but I, I think Microsoft's probably got that locked up. So... You want the console, don't you? Okay, I know you're like, you're like, oh, should yeah. I say, should I? you want the console there. That's what you want. <laughs> like I said, and I hate how much I've actually been correct on this stuff. Is like I said about what a month ago 
that Sony had a month before they needed before they ran out of like goodwill and a, for our, our attention and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it was a month, roughly five weeks. You know, <sighs> I think I think they can go another month, four to six weeks without showing us anything and not be damaged oh. and not lose attention. But, but I is really that what feel they like would do? Is that what that's they the thing. Do? I really feel like this is the place to show it off. Yes, right? yes, get the hype going. I want it, ships. I want you. <laughs> I, 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 I just, I think, I think this is the way to do it. I think you show off some amazing stuff, right? You show some something that you've been keeping in your back po- pocket for Ghost of Tsushima. I think you show your teaser for God of War, and mm-hmm. you say, "Oh, and by the way, that was running on this," and, oh. and you show it, right? Oh, ships, you're killing me. Oh god! And I then would... you show your promo footage, and like Ooh. that's that's how I would do it, and you'd Ooh. fucking set the you'd you'd set the internet on fire. Um, Oof, it would literally be on fire. Like no yeah. one would stop. I, I mean, the, when they showed off the the what was it, the PlayStation Five logo, which was the most like to to normal people who could who could like see exactly what was going was like, yeah, it's just the PS4 logo. It's a logo five. Yeah, it's, it's a logo. It's they they a... they took that that scroll wheel and went down one, and then there was a five, five there. There yeah. you go. So when that happened, the internet was on fire. And I was like, what, what are we all celebrating here? Didn't we know the PlayStation 5 was coming? Was yeah, like, <laughs> I can actually count even into the double digits. You know? So I, I wasn't super impressed, i got to say. Um, but if they were so to I, show the console off, that would you wouldn't be able to hear anything. Well, this is, this is the reason why I think they should do it. Not that they would, but they should do it. Because... If they show off the console and they show off, say, five games, then the literal next conversation for the next week will be this console looks like this, analyzing every corner and every Mm -hmm. port on the back of it, let's say. And then they go, okay, now let's have a look at each game in depth. And that will take you about two to three weeks and that people will be still riding that high. And then they can have another event where they show off something else and then another event, another event. It's just PlayStation all the way. (laughs) The only thing is there's two considerations. One all the uh, attention that's been pent up and built up over not showing us anything gets released, right? And I'm not mm. saying that, that that means Sony will, would lose attention. I'm just saying they would lose the, like, that... You know when you're, you're like, on the edge of your seat waiting to see what they're going to show us, right? They lose that. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But yeah. as, I, as I've said as well, and this was... Um, remember I said I was starting to get worried mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we didn't hear anything. I was like, is COVID really yeah. messing with them or something like that? Which, by the way, they said apparently that COVID isn't messing at all with their plans. Their launch is going ahead on schedule for holiday. So mm-hmm. that's good news. Um, when I said that, I was like, okay, they could just be waiting or maybe it's COVID. But if they are waiting... They need to give the release soon. They need to give the, not the release date, but they need to go, and this is what you've been waiting for. Yeah. Not continuously make people wait. Otherwise, people just get pissed off. The only thing with that, though, is that we had seen so much by proxy. Like, we'd seen the Unreal yeah. 5 running on it, and that shows, like, we know it's powerful. They said specifically, this is running on a PS5 on a console. You know, yeah. we'd seen Ghost, we'd seen 18 minutes of Ghost of Tsushima, we've seen seven minutes of The Last of Us. So we've actually seen a lot. We just haven't seen, like, physically seen the console, right? Yeah. We've seen I way agree. more gameplay running on a PS5 than we have from anything Xbox. <laughs> and, and that's not even, like, forget first party and stuff, right? Like, we've actually seen gameplay running on a PS5. We've seen the Unreal Engine running on the PS5. Have we seen any? Have we seen any gameplay on the Xbox? I think I think we've seen I think we've seen some. I mean, so that go. Uh, so we're not the, sure, right? We're not sure. That's like we can't be like, oh yeah, this, this, this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, so, they some of the I think the snippets from that gameplay right. reveal trailer, the hour long reveal gameplay event, the, the yeah, three minutes like that minutes. we got. Yeah, exactly. Right. Maybe and so <laughs> we've actually seen more from PlayStation without yeah. them showing us anything, which is why I say they could continue to go a little bit longer. Like I feel you and I know what you were saying, but I feel like the way we've had info the way we can take information about it, they actually have the room to play. So then the other reason you might wait is to give Xbox enough room to hang themselves. Yeah. Like if there's nothing comes out, Xbox is gonna get antsy and they're gonna say, look, we can get someone's attention back. Okay, what's the one thing no one knows? It's the price, you know. It's the price. Do you know? Do you know what I hate the most about you, bro? I hate the most about you because you come up with these compelling arguments, and I'm just like, "Fuck! I, I don't want that, though. I don't want that that to happen." Bro, just, I want them to show me the fucking console with a price tag on it. That's what I want. I want them to come out and go, "Look, 
this the hardware is worth five hundred. We're giving it to you for three nine nine. This is oh. it. Boom. Oh, this is the, the boom three nine three nine nine. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, and here's some demos. That's what I want. Can I don't you stop think they'll being do realistic? It. Yeah, like, that's what I want. Oh, I just, boy. Are they gonna do it? You know. Oh, bro, you I, just slayed me right there. <laughs> mate, you know, like, are you telling me that's not the way you want this to go down? Of course not. No one could tell you that. But uh, so, oh, yeah, boy. I just also like, look, I think if they let Xbox reveal too much on their own, Xbox are going to kill themselves. They just dig in their grave. This hole gets deeper and deeper. Anytime those suits get on stage, you it's know, so or in front strange. of a camera. Because any who is the guy? Who is the guy? Oh my god! Who is the guy that? <laughs> Who's said, greenlighting these guys to say this stuff? Someone's uh, got to look at this script, right? right? Someone. Someone, and then nobody at all. It's a bit like that. You know, there's that meme where like uh, everyone always uses it for EA, where they're like, "Okay, we've got a game. We're gonna put a ton of microtransactions in there. What else should we put in there?" And then one guy in the back goes. Um, how about some decent story and an actual like cool gameplay? And then yeah, they look at him and throw him out the window. Yeah, it's like that. It's almost like is that going on there? I don't understand what's going on. It's nuts, isn't it? Oh boy. So, so that's what what I want. What what was the question? It's what I expect to see. What you expect? And, then, and your favorite and your game that you think will launch yeah. with the PlayStation Five? I think we got about a ten percent chance that they'll show us the console. Yeah. yeah. I think I I think because that's like. That's kind of sticking to the script. Showing the console now is a really good, but kind of obvious move. And I'm not saying that as an insult to anyone that thinks they should do this. I just think Sony's trying not to do the obvious thing. Mm. So far, it's working. So far, they've hit every beat completely right. Yeah. Um. So I, I you know, I want them to show it, but I think you know, nine times out of ten, they're probably going to wait for another thing. They're going to show us some gameplay to stretch out a little bit, gain some extra weeks, giving xbox enough time to make another blunder right yeah, and the thing another. is even even if xbox does something that works all sony has to do to take all the oxygen away from that fire is show the console do yeah, you know what i mean fuck that is right? true that is so right? true so that's that's what i suspect will happen and then launch titles man honestly i think i think it's gonna be a cod yeah i yeah. think i think we're in that cod window <laughs> You know? I think COD too. I mean, COD uh, <clears throat> does normally um, launch in like holiday time and whatnot. Yeah. And it does that so we can also get the the Christmas noobs on as well mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But we haven't actually had a COD reveal yet. And famously, they always reveal in May. So yeah. that's why I yeah. thought as well that we might get it in this event. But I think nothing's for sure up. right now with fucking covid and everything like that right because of everybody going and working at home and affecting stop saying it but we're gonna get demonetized or something sorry sorry call it you know it's, it's calamity the the calamity yeah, yeah. that was it <laughs> um i think because of the calamity mm -hmm. suddenly stuff is now it can sync up it's a bit more fluid and i think everybody's like ah you know i know we normally release on like the 11th of november but Actually, we can go two weeks early or two weeks later this time around. People are going to be forgiving of that stuff. Mm. So I suspect COD's going to be COD's going to be it. What would I like though? I don't see. I just don't see Horizon One Dawn, man. It's. I, I just if it was even close to ready, I feel like we would have got so much more. But then again, <clears throat> then again, yeah. Following Sony's new model, Im imagine having that ready completely top secret. Imagine. <sighs> Mate, Mate, what a what a power play! It would blow people away, like absolutely blow people away. Right, like imagine, like imagine, like just but like oh, two weeks before it comes out, they go. Oh, by the way, here's the, the PS5 in the box, and it's just Aloy. In like, yeah, mate. Um, mate, we did have a. I think it was a similar situation with um with God of War. But that's maybe because we didn't know there was a God of War reboot in the mix. That right. we was like, okay, you know, uh, they're working something over there. We heard that they had layoffs like a couple of years before that. And it was like, oh, okay, no one's really paying attention. And yeah. then they came out on stage and they they did a live gameplay demo on yeah. stage with Corey Borlaug with the controller in his hand. I was like, like whoa! whoa. God of War. I'll, I think God of War's like one to three. It was, don't get me wrong, the people that liked it loved it. And it's a good, it is a good series of games. But I feel like it was in the same realm as like Killzone, where yeah. the people that like it like it, but it isn't. It's not a big deal. It's not a AAA title, and then we 
oh cool they're going to remake it but isn't that game finished haven't they finished that series you know it had its own sort of cult following it was like you right. guys are cool over there play thing. Oh, everyone else is just going to be over here though and, and, that, that, and there were a ton of people that were like no it's done it's done yeah. you know don't do this don't reboot it you'll make it it'll be crap and fair enough like that was that's probably where I would have been as well mm. um, plus the, the studio lost all those people and it had all the yeah. troubles and stuff so it's a bit of a nothing game before it came out you know yeah um so shit. I mean, maybe they could. Do. You kind of. I mean, it, I, I just think it's too big. In your I, think mind it's, now. <laughs> I think it's too big. No, but, I agree. Um, it was a lofty prediction. Don't get me wrong, like yeah, a yeah. lofty one. But then again, yeah. I'm all it's, about lofty, and I'm all about driving hype. It, That's what I'm all about. It's thin, but thin's my middle name. Hey. Um, I mean, they've they've kept a lot. I mean, they've kept the PS5 under wraps. That's true. We haven't seen anything of that. Yeah, so I mean, not even a that's that's a good point actually. Not even like a a negative cast, not like a right. a, a corner of the console, right. nothing. We've only seen a dev kit, but those yeah. dev kit leaks happen all the time. Day one, the and dev also, kit gets leaked. The, the controller, the controller, we didn't see right. even the tiniest thing come out of that. Right. Something that radical, it would have been like, okay, we, there's this weird design. It doesn't look very PlayStation, but we'll keep an eye on it. And then it came out. We didn't see anything like that. It's so yep. strange. I've kept such yep. good, t- so good tight seal. It, you know what? It, it's possible. <clears throat> I, I just don't think... Uh, oh, shit, maybe. I, th- I don't think so, but maybe. That would be cool. I, I think it's going to be a COD. I'd like to see something like maybe a Ratchet and Clank or... Um, shit, I had another one that I was going to say, but I can't remember. But... <laughs> I mean, either one of those would be. I think. I think it will be COD. Let's let's uh, give the guys uh, at home listening. I want this to be the question of the uh, of the the episode, and you guys can drop it in the live chat, and you can drop it in the comment section, or on our Discord server by clicking the link in the description. Uh, what do you expect from this PS5 rumor event, and what do you uh, what do you expect to be the launch game for PlayStation 5? Drop them all below, and at the reveal event when we're doing the live watch along, we'll read a couple of those out, and we can get yeah. things going, and everyone can get talking. I think that'd be really. I'm cool. telling you now, if I get a PS5 and it comes in a cyberpunk branded box Ooh. and everything and suddenly the amount I'm willing to pay is probably about $100 higher <laughs> I'm not even joking I'm not you know even what? joking uh- I uh I, I don't know if I don't think it will happen just because of the the deal that Microsoft got with them which is a bit unfortunate but you know the uh Xbox Xbox One X they came out with a special edition Cyberpunk Xbox One X that you can yeah. buy right now Except it doesn't come with the game because the game isn't out and mm-hmm. it's the end of the console life cycle. I didn't, re- I don't yep. really understand what they were doing with that one there. I'm That's a really strange this. one. <laughs> it looks okay. The controller is the best part of it. If you see the controller, you're gonna. Oh, do- yeah. It looks nice. Yeah, it does. It looks. It looks great. But at the end of a console life cycle, and it's, it doesn't come with the game in it. I don't. Yeah, I don't that's really- too late. And this is exactly what Sony should be doing. Yes, for for controllers and places. Look, uh, mate, do you think someone's not willing to pay an additional seventy to a hundred dollars to get a PS Five that looks like that? Right, mate. I was willing to pay upwards, probably about fifteen, fifteen quid, if that blue light would oh. go red and go backwards and forwards, yes. and I would have paid a fiver just to make it blue. The blue when light I was on, playing. The, on the console. I would, played, in I, it. I would have paid even though I feel like it should have been free and just done that way, because that's yeah. what I was sold, <laughs> I would have paid four ninety nine to have it just turn blue when I'm playing, and I would have paid 15 to make it go red and backwards and forwards like a Cylon, or like Kit from Knight Rider, you know? Mate, like, I just don't understand why people pay money for for a different edition con- uh, consoles, man, like special editions and stuff. Right, like right, that. right, the limited edition, like who, who PS4 Pros stuff? and 100 Mate, million stuff. Yeah, yeah They yeah. came out with a black one initially. Then they came out with a white one. I was like, who's going to buy just the white version of it? Right. And, and then they Some came out with idiot. a Destiny-themed one. I was like, who's going to buy a Destiny-themed one? I forgot one? you had that one as well, yeah. And then, uh, and then they came out with a PS4 Pro black. And then uh, who's going to buy just the black version? And then they bought the white one. Who's going to buy the white version? And then they came up with the... The, the five, 100 million. Uh, yeah, yeah, 500 million. 500 million. Yeah. In the see-through blue plastic one. Who's gonna buy that one as well? Come right. on, who's gonna do right. that? What idiot does that one? <laughs> I forgot how many you've actually had. It's had a, lot. a lot. You have a problem. You I've had problem. more more PlayStations than there are years that the PlayStation Four has been on sale. <laughs> That's actually true. I bet. <laughs> okay. Um. 
One final thing before we move on to the next question. Rohit, I have to give him a, a, a shout out here. He was the one that spotted the PlayStation blog. The PlayStation website had changed to include the PlayStation mm-hmm. 5 and a different styling and stuff like that. And he called it in our Discord server. He went, I'm calling it right now. They're going to do an announcement today. And I was like, I don't know, man. I mean, maybe it's, it's a good indication. And then bam, five hours later, right there. The guy... The guy called it. We need to ask him for lottery numbers or something, you know. We yeah, tell that. me that. Like that's that's a that's pretty good. That's a pretty good little uh, call there. Yeah. I did see his message and I was like, wait, what? Like I don't know. They just changed some branding or something like that. That happens yeah. fairly often. Um, nope, he was spot on. Well done. Spot on, mate. Spot on. All right, the next question uh, is Uncle Noli. He's a uh, it's AKA Hamid. Uh, I do love Uncle Noli. That makes me laugh so much. <laughs> he goes, I would like to hear your guys' estimates or predictions for the price of the PS5 and Xbox Series X. Personally, I believe the PS5 will be cheaper than the Xbox. We've spoken a little bit about price before, but go on. Let's uh, let's <sighs> knock this one out as well. What do you think, bro? No way. No way. No, I, you don't think and, it'll be cheaper? No, I just think I think that there's actually two parts to this question. One, I saw people, I think it was Nirok maybe, um, was saying that he thinks the the Xbox is going to be more powerful. I promise we'll answer this question. I, I swear it will come We're back coming around. coming back. Join us for a journey, lads. The thing is, the amount of difference between the hardware and these consoles, and I don't mean how much there is. I mean like the way the Sony SSD works. You know, it's twice as powerful. I think no, it's like it's like 20% more powerful at its regular speed than the Xbox is at his maximum, you know? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like it was something it, like I think it was like 2 2 gigahertz or 2.2 gigahertz on the Xbox side and a uh, gigabit, sorry. And then at the least powerful as you said, it's something like, like 2.8 or something. Like 2.8 it's, it's for the lot. least powerful and then 4.8 yeah. for the most powerful. So it's Way different, way different. It's a huge difference, plus with the variable frequency and power draw and all this stuff. Yeah. Like, in terms of power, it may not even be appropriate to use the old style of, of measuring things. It's like kind of like... Um, and stuff. Right, like, it just it may not develop... We were talking on um, the YouTube comment section with a couple of guys. I was talking to one guy about... He was saying, well, something saying about a load screen. And I was like, you know, with the way it uses this hard drive, like load screens, I don't, they may not be appropriate. Like it might not be needed. But the thing is, how does that affect gaming? Because I'm used to seeing those in game loading screens. I'm used to getting into an elevator or one of those long hallways while stuff's yeah. deleted behind me and in front of rendering stuff in front of me. And so developers does, are used to doing that as well. It's like exactly. built into them now. So how does that change like <clears throat> the pacing of the game? And so it, it, when it back to power, these things, like, on paper, yeah, it might be that the Xbox is more powerful, but in terms of its delivery, like, you know, when electric cars came out, people were like, oh, they're not that great, but then they develop 100% of power at, like, one RPM or whatever it is. Yeah. It just develops things so much differently. That's why the, that Tesla Model D or whatever it is is so ridiculously fast. Insane mode. Right. And so getting <clears throat> back to the price, it's all proprietary tech. It's all brand new architecture. Let's assume mm-hmm. there's no reliability issues. I yeah. think Sony's pretty good at that. You know, there haven't been reliability issues in their consoles. It's not a popular no. thing about PlayStations. Only so, thing is just the the fan making a noise, but it doesn't affect it gets the console. It doesn't die. Right. It doesn't die. Right. And the reality is, if you're not me, you know, if you're someone that's smart enough to figure out to clear out the dust from the thing, it's not even <laughs> that bad, right? Yeah. Like mine hasn't been apart once since I got it. I bet and you got that day of release more, one, right? Mate, I bet that thing's more dust than PlayStation at this point. <laughs> um, like I bet we I need wonder. To open I'm, up and record mate, that. We need to. It, if I clean it, it might just it might be the dust holding it all together. You know. <laughs> you take it apart. And it's just like no, it the just co- no, it just crumbles in front of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like an Indiana Jones scene where it's like the fake ancient artifact. Um, oh boy. Um, so, assuming it all works fine, I just think that how unusual this stuff is is going to push the price up. I don't. I'm not saying they won't be competitive. I just don't see the PlayStation being cheaper. I'm with you on that. This, uh, while 
I love, I absolutely love that mm-hmm. PlayStation decided to go for this super advanced uh, PS5 SSD that isn't available on the market today, that PC gamers are, are, are dribbling at the mouth at because it's just so quick and so advanced and enables so much, uh, so much more in gaming, um, that is going to come at a cost. And while when, before all of this, before we even heard about the SSD, we was like, maybe they can they have to drive the cost down somehow. How can they do that? How can they do that? That was our primary focus because as much as we hate it, as much as we hate it, the world is revolving around cost and people, the only way you get to 100 million consoles the way that PlayStation have is because they had the cheaper console and they kept doing deals at the right times and they've brought the console down to, what is it, like 199 now? It's pretty cheap, yeah. So that's the reason why they got that far. If they go for a higher price console, I don't think they can reach that high. Yeah, I think initially it will be a slower <laughs> ramp up yeah. for sure. I think so. Let me let me say this. I, in terms of the hardware, I don't see the cost of manufacturing being lower than the Xbox. Mm-hmm. They may well take a loss and even a fairly sizable one, mm. depending on their pricing strategy and all this stuff. Certainly possible. But let's let's assume they both come out at cost. I think the PlayStation's probably somewhere in the range of fifty to a hundred dollars more, mm. if it's a cost, because I just think the likelihood is making those things was really expensive. Yeah, you know. But other than that, like, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm gonna say it right now. I think I think I think five fifty, like four, five four nine for the PlayStation Five, and mm-hmm. I think four nine nine for the Xbox Series X. Previously, it was the other way around for me, but I'm thinking, mm-hmm. like, from what you've said about the SSD being uh, so sophisticated, it's going to cost more. I think that's the way it's going to go, or it will be exactly matched at four nine nine. That's the only other options I see. I don't see yeah. the PS Five being cheaper. Um, that's that's where I'm sitting right there. I think that's where yeah. I'm sitting. I think they're both in there somewhere, and I also think that, I mean, they lost was it twenty four dollars? I think on the PS threes. Yeah, um, it was a, it was something. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and I think I think they'd be willing to lose fifty dollars up front. Well, knowing... this is the thing on the PS4, they didn't lose money at all. They made a profit. They on made this pro- got, it was like four dollars or something. It wasn't a lot, yeah. but when you sell a hundred million, yeah, exactly, four dollars times a hundred million is four hundred million, right there. That's great, and that's one of those weird things in it. If you sell uh, a console at ten dollars loss. If you want to get to the hundred million, which is ideally where you want, you want your install base to go to go that far. Yeah, then... imagine on the business call to your investors, you're like, okay, my strategy is to lose a hundred billion dollars. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. Or like one billion dollars, whatever. Like, oh, uh, yeah. Over the course of the next seven years, I'd like to lose a billion dollars <laughs> on our flagship product. That's not going to sit well with people, you know? Right. It's one of those counterintuitive things, but they work it out. And as we said as well in the past, like uh, the digital sales of stuff and also microtransactions are in a completely different place yeah. as they were like six years ago. And they could be making a ton of that back and they could balance it out and it works out well for them. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll have to see, but that's our prediction I mean, right there. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that if they did a $50 loss, let's say they took $50 loss and they both come in at that price point, four nine nine that they mm. make it back on each console within the first year. Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised by that at all because yeah. you got to think they get a cut of Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Disney that's Plus. True. They you know and that's just the just the standards that the very first thing you download, right? They get a cut of all the microtransactions that go on, they get a cut of any of the digital download. No, they get all of the digital download, I suppose if it's Yeah, if it's but, their stuff. If it's their game then they get it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? There's, I wouldn't be, you know, plus they make money on printing stuff. Like, you know, I wouldn't there's be, a lot of other ways to make money to make up that mm. ten dollars that you you lose on a thing. Oh, thanks for writing in anyway, uh, Hamid. Right there, that was a really interesting question, and um, I'm sure that will come up again when we go to the uh, the PlayStation sure. reveal live stream. And whatnot. We have one more question regarding PlayStation, then we can move on. Uh, this cool. one's from Super Bleach. He says hashtag 100 sub video, <laughs> which I, I still have to make, and God, that's going to be terrible. <clears throat> You're not ready for that. You're not ready for that. He says, "I'm going to ask you guys the big question: When are you getting the PS5?" Also, for Eddie, uh, will you pre-order the PS5 in the PS5 reveal event if it's available for pre-order? You I don't definitely have... will. <laughs> yes, I did don't it for even... Stadia. <laughs> yeah, don't don't even be like, oh, you know, I don't know. The answer is yes. Come on. One sec, let me just answer that genuinely. Yeah, oh yeah, I don't know. 
yes, yes, that's yeah. what's gonna happen. Right there. I just happened to have a chance, Cube. I just happened to have a chance, Cube. Red the mother, blue. The... Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't have the money to pre-order yet, so I'm going to have to fight people for my PS5 in November. Damn, I hope you're you're wearing your armor and everything. The console wars right. can get quite vicious sometimes. Um, when will you be getting the PS5, bro? Shit, I don't know. I haven't decided. I haven't decided if I'm going to get it in November or if I'm just tempted by the fact that all the games that I can play on it day of release, I can still play on my PS4. That's a good point. And maybe I wait for a January sale or something. It's a good point. It's a very good point. I'm just not I'm just not sure. You know, also like if it comes out and it's near Black Friday or something like that. Yeah. If it's before Black Friday, do I wait for a Black Friday sale? You know, I'm pro- so I if think there probably... will be, Ooh, I don't know. It's yeah, maybe product. right. Yeah. Unlikely, but possibly. Possibly. So I'm. Not, you know, also, I'm not there's sure. the there's the possibility as well. So um, there was a rumor, not rumor, sorry, a report that apparently PlayStation have only ordered five million consoles to be made, whereas yeah. this time or the launch window of last console, the PS4, they sold seven point five million. So. Mm-hmm. There might be scarcity of the actual console, so it might be that you, if you don't pre-order, you might not get one for launch window. You know? Yeah, I think I think I'm if not too bothered by launch window, hmm. but I'll definitely be getting at the latest that second batch. Yeah, I just don't know where in the first batch I'm going to come in. I think I probably won't get it day of release. You think probably, so? maybe. It also de- it just de- oh, fuck, I don't know it depends man I, it depends it depends on it depends on the games it depends on the price it depends right. on what is on offer we haven't seen anything yet that's the problem <laughs> so right we, we can't that's make informed thing. decisions like, <laughs> like the the PS4 came out and it was at price where was it the PS4 no the PS3 came out and it was priced where it was and I didn't get it straight away and it came mm. down by like one hundred and fifty dollars within the first year yeah you know it's like a so, big sale day and everything like that it was quite right. Big. I'm not saying I'm definitely not waiting a year on it, not yeah. even close. Yeah. But I maybe wait until 2021. Maybe, maybe if I can stay strong. Yeah. I just. It, well, do you know what? I think the honest answer it depends how yeah. deeply in love I am with go- games like Ghost of Tsushima and Cyberpunk, because if they're good enough, they could motivate me to get the thing so I can see them and play them even better and smoother. I'm not even joking. Do you know what the worst part is? And I really feel bad about this. Is that. <clears throat> I'm going to go day one and get it. I'm going to be mm-hmm. one of the arseholes that is going to be wearing my PlayStation hoodie with my PlayStation t-shirt, with my PlayStation drawers, with my PlayStation uh, ankle bracelet and stuff yeah. like that. And I'm going to be right... I was right... there with you last time. Exactly. We were literally in, this, in the line together. So like, I'm with you. I feel it. <laughs> I'm going to be there and I'm going to buy it. And then I'm going to bring it home and I'm going to get to play whatever it's Cyberpunk, Ghost, whatever the updated patch is, or whatever the brand new game is that comes out that time. And I feel bad because you're going to see it, and I know you're going to be like, fuck, do you know what? I think I'm going to get it. And I hope to God they still have them in stock because I don't want you to be like, yeah, actually, I'm sold on it. I'm going to get it. Oh, there's none left. Oh. Because <laughs> then I'll be like, no, okay, you're living here until you can get one. You're living here. We're playing this together until yeah. we can get one, all right? Fucking do it. <laughs> it's, uh... Forget your family. Forget everyone else. You're coming here, mate. <laughs> yeah, I. You know, it's that. That is a worry. I'm. I am. I am considering getting it day of release. I just think it's gonna. De- it's gonna depend. It's also gonna depend how well my PS4 handles things. You know, like once I finally get it all cleaned up, um, it might give it a new lease on life. You yeah, know, give it another year or something like that, right? Right. And at this point, I think I can wait through. I think I could wait three months for the PS5. I think I could. I'm not saying I want to, but I could, you know? Yeah. And if if there's something where it's like, let's say let's say Cyberpunk releases an, an online version, right? Yeah. And we try to play together and just your brand new PS5 versus my day of release PS4 that I just can't play, you know? Yeah. Fuck it, I'll upgrade, you know? But as, if, as long as I can still kind of enjoy it, I think I'm going to wait probably for the price to come down and they did it to themselves they shouldn't it sounds so dumb it's a great pro-consumer move but it was the most worst business move they should never have made the first gen ps5 games backwards com- or forwards compatible 
Yeah, it was, uh, they had, they felt the pressure, right? Because Microsoft are, are desperate. They're doing everything they can to try and get as many consumers on their console, even though they don't have the games to back up their console anyway. Yep. So they could do all these services and all these offers and features that would hopefully appeal to fans. And, and then PlayStation, exactly. The PlayStation, they were just like, oh, well, we can't not do it. We can't, we, we look like dickheads if we don't do it. So right. they're kind of forced into, not that I'm saying that this is bad. This is definitely great. And I think PlayStation might have done it anyway, but this is forced them that like they literally have nowhere else to go. They couldn't say yep. now, no, we're not doing that. <clears throat> and basically there's plenty of people now that are like, well, why will I get it at its day one, you know, inflated price? Why will yeah. I get the new console? Because and I'm not saying like, it's not, I doubt it's going to be the price that puts me off. We still need to see what, what it is, but as long as it doesn't start with a six, I'm probably into it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I final think answer, gonna, don't know. <laughs> final answer, don't know. I, I've said my one already. I, I'm, yeah. I'm planning to get a day of release if everything goes well. Um, if there is a pre-order available at that moment, you know I'm going to be doing it right there for you guys to get the hype train going. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Thank you for writing in, Super Bleach. That was a good question. I might actually post a, a Twitter poll to ask that same question online to see uh, what people say and then post that and then post the results when it comes to the reveal event stream. Yeah, that'd be interesting. <clears throat> So uh, an hour and 10 minutes into the podcast, uh, after we've done basically the first topic or first and second topic rolled into one, <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> um, let's move on to our, to our next topic. So this is uh, Microsoft. They came out recently and they promised that the Xbox Series X will launch with quote unquote thousands of games and all of them being able to take advantage of the console's new hardware. So, uh, at the face of it, Microsoft is shouting about their backwards compatibility system, which is good for me personally, but yeah. not for me personally. I mean, I'm not really... Like, I, I like the idea that games will be up and also the frame rate will be uh, a bit higher and you'll get some extra graphical power. But it's not... I've never been the kind of guy that goes too far back into my old uh, library of games, right? Yeah. I'll play God of War. That's a, one that's... Uh, in my heart and I'll I'll play that as much as possible but I don't think I'll go much beyond the last generation but a lot of people like backwards compatibility but the real story in here is that backwards compatibility is being run on Microsoft's side so it's being run by the console not by the developers okay with that they're adding support for better load times higher frame rate and a HDR conversion so apparently all games will have HDR even though they never came out with it in the first place when they when they made the game. For those of you that don't know, like, haven't had the experience HDR because you haven't got, like, a HDR screen or monitor or something like that, it's quite nice. It's not revolutionary, but it's it's nice. It's nice to see it in a new light. Yeah. That last one, though, I'm a little bit sceptical on because if it's not baked into the console, if it's not baked into the game, sorry, it kind of looks fake and artificial and whatnot. It doesn't look... Yep right they did that with a red dead redemption when that came out there was a it was like yes hdr setting turn on and then the two days after release people were like this isn't hdr this is fake this is a fake hdr it doesn't look yeah. right you can so, feel it so yeah um but microsoft promising thousands of games at launch is basically them saying so we've had this backwards compatibility for a while on all these old games it will also work on the xbox series x that's 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 what they're saying right there I think what they're saying is we don't have any new games for you to play. Yes. Here's all the old games you wanted to play. But why, you know, you, it's, a, it's a Microsoft machine. Why yeah. would you play it on that and not PC? That's the that's another point. That's another point. Me and uh, me and Dan were talking about it for a while, our super bro Dan. Um, Dan raises a lot of good points as well. He says, uh, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, uh, there are a lot of good services and a lot of good features on the Xbox. However, they don't have the games to back up any of those features and any of those those uh, those. Um, Use your words, Ed. I was saying, what was it features <laughs> and uh, and other things on the console? They, <laughs> they don't have the games to back it up, essentially, and PlayStation do. And when you have someone who does have all these available features, all available games as well, it's kind of hard to pick them. And, and like you said as well, you can play them on PC. So why why go for the Xbox? It's, uh, the, the, the thousand games are great, but they are all old games that most likely you're probably not going to want to play. Maybe you want to dip in there every now and again. 
but is that enough to force you to pay how much it's going to be five hundred dollars for a, a brand new console yeah not for me not for me either not for me and i just think like so many people have said well look i'm why am i going to get the xbox the series x when all the games i want to play are available on my pc anyway yeah you know, like that's the point of exclusives is to keep people in your infrastructure and then you make it open to the other. I don't know, man. It's just so, so many weird decisions. And it's just like they see money, they see dollar signs and start drooling and go for it. And it's killing their own business, you know? Yeah. It's, um, they, do you know, I remember when they first announced this Play Anywhere initiative where you could play your uh, Xbox games on PC and stuff like that for free and whatnot. Um, and I was like, so hold on a minute. If you're now supporting all your games to run on PC, what does that mean for Xbox? Then, what does that mean for the people who have an Xbox? What, what do they, what are you selling them then? And then a, a couple of years later, we fast forward, and it's just you're not selling them anything. You've in fact just kind of like left them. It's, it's you're now selling games, and you don't care where people buy them from. So then, why should we buy your console? That's the that's the question that I keep asking myself. Yeah, they're they're trying to sell basically the same product but to a slightly different audience, which is mums that don't want to spend 1500 on a gaming rig for their kids, so they'll spend 400 on an Xbox, you know? Yeah, that's what they're doing with that. What was it, the uh, Xbox, is it Maverick or, or Lockhart? That yeah, was it, Lockhart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they're probably going to do with that, which we still haven't seen, by the way, which was very interesting. We uh, The rumors of those are coming in thick and thin all the time, but we still haven't goddamn seen that thing, which is really strange. It's a lot of rumors and not a lot of uh, reality going on this generation, right? Yeah, just a bunch of in-game cutscenes. That's all we get. That's all right. we get. <laughs> um, one other little rumor, since we're on the topic of rumors, PlayStation apparently, and this was, uh, again, sent in by our super bro Dan. He gave this to me. It's very, very loose at the moment. There's not any really real information to back it up, but I thought I'd mention it just in case. There might be a version of the PS5 that has double the SSD storage uh, at launch. So as cool. well as the 825 gigabytes of space in the, the the base model, there could be another premium model that has a 1.65 terabytes of SSD space. And apparently it's only going to be like another $100 more. I mean, it's, not, it's not a big of a jump in my opinion, but yeah. it's, it's expensive to ask someone for $650, right? Yeah. The other thing is like, one, I kind of presume that we'll be able to buy extra stuff for it later down the road. You know, yeah. like how people added extra hard drive to their PS4s. Mm. And I presume that too. I don't think they've actually said it, but I, I presume you're going to be able to like, there's going to be a slot, do. a bay, a PCIe bay that you can just chuck some more SSD, right. RAM and SSD into it. And I, I know I'm the guy that's saying, I think Cyberpunk's going to be 150 when it's finished. Like when it's finally, <laughs> when you've got all the patches, it's going to be 150. Yeah. Um, But... Like, what are the biggest games that you really play? Like, Battlefront is r ridiculously <laughs> bloated. But, like, Red Dead Redemption 2, for example, right? Similar yeah. size game in the hundreds, yep. somewhere in there. Uh, Call of Duty, of, yeah, nearly but, 200 like, for, gigs. <laughs> for, yeah, mate. For Red Dead, you got so much game there yeah. for that 100 gigs that I'm just, I'm kind of used to juggling, you know? And because of that, I reckon 800, let's say that's five serious size games yeah i reckon i can i reckon i can i can i can run on that i can work with those five games like if i've got if i've got cyberpunk ghost of tsushima fingers crossed last of us 2 ac valhalla what else is coming what's coming in 2021 let's have a look mate all we know so far is that we know there's going to be a call of duty like we're, we're sure that the uh the sun Boom. will rise but assassin's creed uh, and then we have these other couple of PS5 games that I mentioned before, but we don't know if they're actually coming 20. Estimated is 2020. You know, yeah. Quantum Era, the uh, uh, Dauntless, the Godfall and stuff like that. But we don't actually know when they're coming. And then you've got yeah. the sports games that come out, you know, those casual games and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Skull and Bones is in 2021, apparently. Yeah. That yeah. pirate thing. Um, we got fucking dicked on that though, man. They were like they, the way they were pitching it. They were like, "Oh, this is basically going to be the the ship to ship combat part of uh, like Assassin's Creed Black Flag." And we're like, "Yeah!" And it's like, "Oh, it's a multiplayer game." Oh, that's not right, really right. <laughs> And I mean, I mean, maybe the Harry Potter 
RPG comes out. That too. Batman. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, you know, I, I think, honestly, 800 is probably good enough. 800 is probably good enough for games that come out this year anyway. Yeah. You know? Um, and I bet you can run those games plus, say, like, a Call of Duty or something for two years and not get bored. The only the only advantage this would pose if it was real, which right now it's looking very very loose that it's like, it's mm -hmm. very fake and whatnot. But if it was real, the only benefit is is that it will be one hundred so one point six five terabytes of the PS five SSD, which isn't available on the market at the moment. You couldn't right. upgrade your PS five with the exact same SSD in the future if you wanted to until they come out with technology that would that would be able to match it. This will be. The SSD technology that is in the PlayStation 5, the super advanced SSD. So that's the yeah. only advantage that I see of this at the moment. So that would be one reason to buy it. That would be very <clears throat> cool. Um, yeah, it would be very cool. I think I can make the 800 work for now. Yeah, I think I could you know? too. I think I could too. Yeah. Um, let's move on to uh, our next topic. Um, bro, it's bad news. Great. Bad, bad, bad news. You haven't Fast been recording your audio all this time. <laughs> that's it. That's it right there. Fast and Furious Crossroads has been delayed to August 7th. You joke, but um, the last time we did this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> I went and found the footage for it, which hopefully we're showing on screen if we've yep. remembered. Unironically, I think that looks like a ton of fun. This is the only racing game other than Mario Kart 64. That I'm actually interested in. Dude, I am too. I'm so glad you said that because I was like, I was looking at it and I was like, oh my god, this this looks cheesy, but it looks it's fast and furious. It's supposed to be cheesy. I wanna play this game. Dude, and then I'm have, like, oh god. Oh Jesus like, Christ. If you have some American muscle car with a machine gun mounted to the top racing a rocket going yeah. horizontally across the ground, I'm in i'm so in you know like the the thing i would love to see and i don't even play rocket league is for these guys to strike a deal with rocket league so you can get some of these cars or skins in it or yes. or that they can get like a you know how nazi zombies came with call of duty as an aside like for a limited time only this game allows you to play these cars but basically like rocket league yeah you know? like <laughs> that would be a serious play yeah man god damn it oh this uh I'm, we're looking at the we, we've got the trailer running as well and i'm actually watching the trailer again the gameplay trailer and it looks basic as fuck it looks like old ps3 graphics it doesn't look anything great you've got uh the realistic voices as well from like uh tyrese and letty and stuff like that they sound like them at least i, I think mm -hmm. they might have got them to actually do the voice recording for it but it's just wacky nonsense fun right here. I even yeah. looked at one of these uh, rockets that they shot, and it looks like um, it kind of looks like an anime rocket. Like it's got a star coming out the back of it, and I'm like, right, right, the hell right. is that? But it's so cool. Perfect. I want there's it. One, there's one where they've got like this giant, like it looks like a sea mine attached yes. to them by a chain. Yes. Like it just, it's insane. It kind of looks like fun. I feel like this would be a good game for like just a chill hang stream. Yeah. You know. Oh um, god. It, it, I'm I'm genuinely like I didn't know about it before. I th I remember hearing something about it but not caring, you know. Yeah. I, August I know what game I'm going to pick up if I'm in the market, you know. <laughs> it actually oh, looks boy. good. I'm looking uh I'm looking forward to this actually, really unironically looking forward to this. And um it's August 7th, I think it's coming out. When it comes out, we need to do a funny gameplay session together where we're playing this game, just being dicks and doing voices and stuff like that because it, it needs to happen. It just needs yeah, to happen. Yeah, mate, right with, with some um, branded alcoholic beverages. Yes. But we're not going to say the name. That we can't say the name, obviously. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, uh, the well, I mean, family. Like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's starting to look like the whole social distancing not social distancing but like the separation stuff is starting to loosen so maybe we'll be back to doing normal videos soon yeah that'd um, be cool actually didn't we get asked on the conversations podcast and I said two weeks I reckon it'll start to loosen up yeah I think I'm you said so something I'm so good like at that. this <laughs> I'm so good at this 
<laughs> when you're right, you are one hundred percent right. I'll, I'll give you that. That's what. I'll, that I'll is you. true. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, let's talk a uh, a little bit about the uh, the Last of Us reveal because that that happened a couple of days ago. We did a, a watch along and whatnot. Yes. And going into it, prior going into it, we was a little bit a little bit skeptical. I'd say you a little bit more than me. I downgraded my my pre-order from the early edition all the way down to the standard edition and you said you wasn't going to buy it is that right? That's where I was. I still think I'm not going to get it. Yeah. Day 1. Yeah, I think I'm going to at least wait a couple of days. That's where I think I'm at. Yeah. But then what, what happened with this reveal? So, the reveal I'll say this, even before this, we had like a minute trailer of some of the stuff that was in that. Yeah. And from that, I was saying like, look, this looks like a, just a good old fashioned revenge story. And I dig it. You know, I'm I'm down. Mm-hmm. The trailer, we didn't see any of the story. The story could still suck. And I'm I'm not playing it for the gameplay, right? I, I pre- appreciate this one actually has gameplay. Yeah, better than The Last of Us 1. Like you famously yeah. said, like, there's like three enemies and you don't really do anything you go down a corridor that's all you really yeah. do and there's I was no like, puzzles yeah, there's no cool. enemies it, it, as the game goes it's lacking on the game bit you know? <laughs> yeah but i absolutely love it it's one of my top probably top five easily top 10 probably top five games of all time right love mm-hmm. it but it's lacking in the gameplay this at least it looks like there's a ton more when it comes to the gameplay it actually looks fun i presume there'll be some good puzzle mechanics it's more open world, that kind of stuff. All good things. Still don't know anything about the story, and that's the bit I'm really concerned about. However, it looks pretty good. It does. It does, It genuinely right? looks pretty good. That little so bit I of think... gameplay, was it like 18, was that 10 minutes or something like that we had at the end of it? Yeah. Eight minutes, something like that. It looked very, very cool. The verticality of it, the open-ish areas, it, it basically looked open world. Right. Um the, new enemies, the new enemies, the animations as well. Being able to like dodge knives and and then stab and then lean back and stuff like that, very right. cool. The I liked especially. I think we both like this. The um, so instead of you having like an XP system in a game and then you just use a skill point to like boost your your stats or something like that or build yeah. something on your gun, you uh, you pick up a a shooter's magazine that you find just in a random store somewhere and you're like oh so that's how you make that and then th- then you can build that thing or then you can do right, that right. thing and whatnot, which is quite a cool way to keep immersion and stuff like that i i was really sold on it yeah i will say because and there's a dog barking of course i can um, hear it oh good oh good <laughs> uh, because people were saying to me you know look the the reviews are going to be out a week and a half or something before release yeah, date. Yeah, yeah, week before the actual release those, date. I don't trust those. I don't trust those hacks. Yeah. You kidding me? <laughs> so I'm still gonna wait. It, it looks good to me. It does look good. I'm gonna wait for you to play it. I I'm guessing you'll probably get a good five to ten hours in within the first couple of days easily. Yeah, would be my guess. And if you're like, yeah, it's a good story. You know, great. I'll just I'll pick it up two days later, you know. Yeah, Otherwise... you were. You, I was gonna say like that's probably once I get a good feel for it, I'll be like, this is this is good or this is bad, and then you can know, and then you can, and then you'll only be like a day yeah. late, right? Like, look, I don't. Neither of us know what the spoilers are. No, right? we don't. No. However, the thing about I've said, look, it's possible that this guy was lying. In a sense, because all good lies, the best lies include the truth. And so if, if he said stuff that was phrased in a way where Naughty Dog couldn't be like, yeah, that he's not wrong, you know? Yeah. Like that is technically, missing you know, context and stuff like that. Right, exactly. So, you know, I think with you having played it to a couple of days, I think you'll find out if it's garbage or not, you know? Yeah. And if the story's garbage, you can just tell me, look, it's garbage, don't bother. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you know, if it looks like it's all together, right, and it isn't, you know, it's not like secret aliens actually killed Ellie's mum and Joel's, <laughs> at, you know, like if if it, you know, if it's not just utter garbage, then frick it, I'll get it. I'll be two days late. So what, you know? Yeah. I've ordered games. I've pre-ordered games that came two days late. You know, you've been pissed um, off, but still, you know, it's happened, right? <laughs> so it's not die. the end of the world, yeah. right? Um, 
So it'll be, yeah. I'm, I did, I'll tell I did you like this. that event, though. So I got yeah, you. I did too. Well, so this is the thing is, prior to that event, I was not going to buy it, yeah. you know? I was going to wait for you to finish playing it and borrow yours or, um, or just not play it, you know? Yeah. And I th- think... I think I'm sold on it as long as as long as you don't come back and go yeah it's absolute garbage you know yeah I mean if you say you're not sure on it I'll probably wait I'll probably wait if you're like it's good but I'm just there's something about it I'll wait I'll borrow yours but if you're like no it's it's sick you gotta play it I'll buy it you know that's where I'm at I feel you I uh I did like that event especially because we managed to work out something quite cool like before the um before the uh, the event went live, we put it up there. It was like, okay, guys, should we do a reaction to this this stream? Should we do like a whole watch along to get the guys together and have some fun? And people were like, ah, oh, we don't know. Maybe people will post spoilers. It's very oh, dangerous yeah, out yeah. there. It was like, ah. Oh. And then we worked out a whole system where we disabled the chat on YouTube, and then we were chatting in Discord, and that went fucking amazingly, I have to say, it especially because we can post like gifts and stuff like that. It was yeah, really, yeah. really cool. It was really good because, you know, sometimes in the chat, someone's like trying to use the they're putting the emotes in like the Ainsley, but they have to write it. Everybody knows what they're posting, but you yeah. can't really see it. You know, it's in your yeah. imagination. And it was good to be able to have the gifts there and, and our emotes and stuff. It, it was, was good. It was a surprising amount of hard work, though. We had to account for any new randoms that found the stream and then joined the Discord and messed with permissions and stuff. But it was really good. It was a really smooth thing. I think we should do more stuff through Discord if we can. Yeah, yeah, I would say so too. We have to thank Diogo for that. He did all of the basically the back end work where he was like setting up a new channel and making sure that people that join they can't post spoilers and then just dip out and whatnot. Right, right, right. So, right. so he massive uh, massive help to him right there. Uh, so uh, let's. Uh, I wanted to actually ask you actually because uh, we do on the True Gamer podcast every now and again. What have you been playing recently, bro? I've been meaning to finish Doom Eternal. <laughs> are you still at the was it the unmaker what's his what's his name can maker can maker that's it yeah i just i just i, I have I, i'm not stuck i just haven't booed it back up yet life I has had, been getting in the way right just like I, I found myself being surprisingly busy and I, you know i wanted to record a thing i was going to record something today but um other things got in the way um so i'll, I'll do some stuff tomorrow but then i can't play because i'm doing that and my girlfriend's off for the weekend, so I got less time than I was expecting to. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Nothing major, but it's just like this thing that I was supposed to do Friday is probably going to get pushed to like Monday, Tuesday, you know? No, I feel you. And then you, you got to edit it. Or, well, no, I, one of my projects got to edit, but I do need to beat Doom Eternal. And then what else am I playing? I don't think there's much on right now until like The Last of Us no. and Ghost of Shishima come oh. out. I think it's that. Yeah, yeah, the Ghost of Tsushima I'm really excited for, but I, as soon as that's done, as soon as I'm done being Doom, I'm going to get that Warzone, because I know you and some of the boys have been playing it. Yeah, we have. It's surprising, um, actually. I didn't think... I mean, I, I dropped off of Warzone. I dropped off of, like, Call of Duty a while ago, and mm-hmm. I was like, eh, you know, it's getting too ridiculous. It's not for me. I played the main campaign for Modern Warfare. played a little bit of the Moi player. Yeah, I was me like, too. Yeah, the, the Moi player is still garbage. Let's, let's get out of here. And then the guys, some of our friends, were playing the Warzone stuff and playing that blood money thing, which is a whole new mode inside no it. No idea. I don't know. what. As I said, it's, it's, a, it's a new mode that when you first get into it, it's like the first time you play, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. The second time, you kind of pick it up. And then the third time, it's, it's a very simple game. It's Call of Duty. It's designed for the for the you know the the most basic gamers to jump in at any moment exactly to come in and play the game. So yeah, you'll get it. You'll get it. And it be that's what I've been playing as well recently. But yeah, I've been once. playing. I've been playing one other game that is yeah. actually quite cool. So do you remember at EGX I got to play the Iron Man VR game? Yeah. Iron Man VR came out with a demo that is released already, okay. and I've been playing that. Get that some... is fun, boy. My God, is it fun? I know you enjoyed it a lot at EGX. I was about to say because this is, I enjoyed watching you play at EGX because you look like a knobhead. So <laughs> Wait, do me a favor. Before I got into the VR, or it was just or... All, all the time at EGX. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, cool, cool. You've got to play it 
and get the camera on and record you playing it. And then so that you can go like, you know, with the, you know how we're the small box and the stream is always the big box. Yeah. Just switch it every now and then when there's something like particularly embarrassing, you know, so you go. <laughs> but it, it, look, it did look like a lot of fun. Um, it really is. You feel like you feel like Iron Man in it. And I I, I downloaded it knowing that I was going to get to play probably it's close to the same stuff that I got to play at EGX plus a few yeah. more extra missions and whatnot and uh, you get a cool skin for when the game comes out as well Sick. it's like molten lava skin I was like great that's cool um, but it's so much fun man and you, because I'm at home I get to be the full dickhead that I am and not just yeah. the, the, uh, the the half dickhead that I was showing at EGX and yeah. my god you're, you're, every moment that I'm I'm hearing those uh, those blasters like power up, it's like bing, pshu, bing, pshu. Yeah. I'm doing all of the moves that I've seen in the movies. I'm like, yeah, yeah, this way, yeah, that way. You were doing that EGX as well, like you were starting to, to do it. So like, <laughs> I can imagine when you're at home, you're like, you're really like, yeah, I'm going to do the, like, you know, when you would um, fly with your hands down by yes. your sides, like the first time you were just doing it. And then by the end of it, you were like proper... You know, pushing your chest out and, and like trying to push yourself off. It was it was funny to watch. Like it looks it looked like a lot of fun. I could see what you were doing on the screen as well and it did look fun, you know? Yeah. I uh I can't wait for this game to come out. It's actually um I think it's like June seventeenth or something like that is coming out. So just after the uh just before, sorry, The Last of Us, if I get that a couple of days earlier, I can bang that out in a day or two. Because I'm sure it's not gonna be a long game. It's only like thirty quid for the game. Um but I think that'll be that'd be quite fun to play before before The Last of Us. That'd be quite good. I'm playing that. It's good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. that that sounds like a good one to be honest. I mean, I'm actually kind of jelly because for me it's like beat Doom, jump on Call of Duty, you know, um, and try a couple new game modes, I guess. But I mean, that's nothing new. Do you remember when Kill Confirmed came out? It wasn't a thing, and then Modern Warfare Three, I think. Yeah, and- yeah, I do remember that. And we were like, oh, it sounds stupid. And then we, it was like the only thing we ended up playing, you know, same sort of deal. It like, was I'm sure, the best. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm sure this is great. I'm just, you know, it's like, ah, but another Call of Duty, really? But I'm sure it's good. Yeah, yeah. It is good fun. It is really good fun. All right. Uh, let's kick it over to our bros, our true gamers who have written in on our Discord server. Thank you, bros, so much for doing that. It keeps this show going. It raises good, uh, good conversation. Let's uh, read a few questions out here. Our first one from Craft uh, the Kickboy, P- uh, hashtag PC loser race, right there. He <laughs> says, uh, <laughs> he just said, writes in saying, Why uh, is Superman your favorite hero? <laughs> that's a, <laughs> that's as a good a weird question. One. Because he's the best. Just that's it, you know? He's the superhero. Um, but also, Troy Baker's Persian son, uh, right, Sin, that's our boy Ozzy, and he says, to follow up on the Superman question from Kraft, there is a Superman game in development by WD right now. Uh, the rumors go back and forth on that one. I don't know, bro. Yeah, we've been hearing this rumor for like, what, three years? Yeah, it's been a while. And then we heard like they were they, they tried to do one, then they canceled it, and then they brought it back. Oh, so weird. Um, he says, what do you think it will offer, and are you excited or skeptical? I'm skeptical, as I said, because we've had so many rumors go back and forth, and I'm more excited now because we've, we're getting more Superman-related stuff. Like, we got the, the Snyder cuts being confirmed, and I'm like, yes, now's the time for everything Superman. And then Henry right. Cavill's been confirmed to come back to play Superman in other movies and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I'm excited, but we've been hearing this rumor for such a long time. I don't know yeah. what's going on. And they can't. They clearly can't lock down a super superhero story that fits Superman. I think we said this once before in the in the previous you know the podcast that we we couldn't get back. Um, right. That the the main reason why we get good superhero games like Batman and Spider Man and stuff like that is because yeah. the character, the hero, even is kind of relatable. Because yeah. even Batman, Batman is just a, a human who has all these gadgets. And you could imagine yourself having all of those gadgets. Like, and if, if you won the lottery and then went and traded with ninjas, you're basically Batman, right? Exactly, exactly. And Spider-Man, while he does have the webs, I mean, the webs are, like, created by him and whatnot. I mean, he can climb up walls, which isn't really human. But that kind of stuff, you can imagine yourself doing. You could do that kind of stuff if you it's had... Um, grapples if you had yeah. some sort of like if you're swinging from a rope that kind of stuff 
But you can't imagine flying through the air. You can't imagine being shot and then bullets bouncing off of your chest. You can't imagine heat vision or anything like that. So right. it's very hard to become relatable to a character and make that compelling. Yeah, for real. That's um, that's the real problem is is making making it to where Superman it, the stuff to to fight Superman. You need something, you know, that's so outside of like. Okay, let's say Spider-Man fights like, I don't know, has to stop a truck, right? Yeah. You're familiar with a truck, but Superman's a guy that can, you know... Push a planet. A, right, exactly. can push a planet or use a skyscraper as a baseball bat. And so what is going to cause an issue for him is going to be so outside of your realm that you just can't really connect with it. Yeah. Um, I think I was saying, like, the way I would do this story was... Uh, this game is... Is you you don't make it a Superman game. You make it a you make it a a Clark, a Clark Kent game. Right, the Superman. It's it's man is the focus, not super. And I would probably make it where he loses his power for some reason, like I don't know, kryptonite injection or some magical wave or some shit. Right. Mm. And for like the first half of the game, you have to go through and like earn your powers back basically yeah and so like you're vulnerable at the beginning so by the time you're back to being superman you feel like you've earned the powers so like you're you respect them now you you were vulnerable at least at the beginning so now you still you carry that forward into the rest of the game because you know you can be hurt right even if no longer and your perception of what is normal within the game is scaling up because you went from the guy who like you know, can get hurt with a baseball bat to suddenly being able to like take that and um, you gain your super strength back, right? And then you get yeah. faster and then you get your flight or, and then like maybe you can do one and not the other, right? So maybe you can use your laser eyes or fly and whichever choice you make that dictates, you know, where you go in the game or what what thing you can access or some story element, you know? Yeah. And then so because you've been making those decisions and prioritizing one power over the other before you can use them all together, you're really Superman, then like, I don't know, you're invested. You're invested in man, not super, yeah, right? You've started to build the bond as well with all of those powers and whatnot. Like right, you, you, exactly. You so start then, to learn as well as Clark starts to learn it. Exactly. So then by the time you end up fighting like whoever the big bad would be, Darkseid or yeah. whatever, that, yeah, you're using a skyscraper as a javelin, but you didn't start that way. You started as a regular guy and built your way up to that point. So it feels like this is the normal thing, you know? Yeah. Um, and you still feel like you're at risk. Um, that that I think I think that's the way to go. And well, I, like I said in my in my video that I did with yeah. the uh, the perfect like Superman game, I made a lot of emphasis on story, and people were asking yeah. as well, like what would you do like mechanics wise though that's the video game part of it and i was like yeah that's true and and i mean you we can get down to the nitty gritty and talk about like and i did speak a little bit about how you could do cool um like saving uh, whatever it's like there's a rocket launch and saving everybody who's watching and also the people inside the capsule and stuff like that and how to make it cinematic and stuff like that but i made a big emphasis that you should you should try and nail Clark Kent first because, as we've said, mm -hmm. that's the character. That's the yeah. person that Superman is, not Superman. Uh, he gets the... that. That's what you should nail first of all. And also, it will build that relationship with the character. But I don't know if anyone's going to listen. If WB, if you want to, if you want to hire me, that's great. I'll happily right. uh, give you all the coaching you need from a real Superman fan. And um, yeah, uh, the yeah. other thing is like you, you actually did say, well, these are the mechanics. Like this is how I do the super speed and the yeah. fights and stuff like that. You did say that, but that comes as a that's a secondary thing, right? Yeah. You gotta get you gotta get the the story first. Like games aren't some games are about the gameplay, but. A game like this, it needs to be about the story. There needs to at least be a good plot and a good reason for you to be doing these things and you know? Yeah. Yeah. And and a character there. Like so many people don't understand that Superman isn't the character Clark Kent is. Yeah. So many people don't know that. Right. So strange, right? So you know, unless you nail that, then there's no real point in in doing the rest, you know? Yeah. Big agree. Big agree right there. 
Um, let's kick it over to. Do you want to read the next question, bro? From uh, have you got the Discord open by any chance? Or have some uh, sort of sprung I do it on the you? Discord. I do have the Discord, but where where are we? Uh, in the where podcast channel, right there is uh, the Great Gamer. Where? How far up are you? Uh, not that far up. Uh, if you look at the questions thread, the the picture I've put there of the True Gamer podcast. Underneath it, yeah. Yeah, underneath it. I think it's like the third comment down. Oh yeah, cool. We Will Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven raise the benchmark for open world RPGs set by a stupid question? Yes. Next question. <laughs> Diogo says, "Like, well, I, seriously, genuinely, I think first of all, if it's half the game, uh, The Witcher three was, it's going to be the best game of the year." Yep. Yep. I agree. I agree. They've had this game in development for what eight years now? Yeah, long, long time now. Long, and, long time. And I know they've done. They've had Mike Pondsmith, the guy that made the tabletop version, like the Dungeon and Dragons version yes. of it. He's done a ton of consulting with them. Yeah, I think. I think this thing could, it could um, become the bar, not set the bar. You know. I agree. I agree. This is the thing. Um, so they they did everything they could with the current technology and also like PlayStation Four, early PlayStation Four days as well. Um, getting the witcher and getting that huge huge world crammed into what's possible on the playstation 4 it Mm. was a masterpiece it was amazing how they managed to do that now imagine that but with the playstation 4 tuned to its maximum and with the potential space of the playstation 5 and the xbox series x and stuff like that it's mm-hmm. going to have so much, and they have all that experience now as well. Everything they've learned from making The Witcher, they're going to make something truly amazing. I feel like, yeah, I could be completely wrong. We could have egg on our faces, but I don't think that's likely. I think it's really going to, like you said, make the new bar yeah. for RPGs. My big worry is that there won't be enough character flaws. You know, like. <laughs> summoning roach right is my bike gonna come up and then like drive over a house and park on the roof so i can't get to it i'm imagining like the did, uh, like roach you know? doing the press-ups on that thing that he, uh there's that right. like gift there how are we gonna do that come on <laughs> exactly that's my big worry um so you know no I, th- I think it's gonna be absolutely amazing i also think there's a third person view coming yeah for next gen it'll be in the patch um once enough people have moved away from the original Let's just be honest, from the Xbox One, Series yes. One, X, yeah. Like the one that's away, dragging us down. Yeah, once enough people are off of that, then yeah, we'll get that third party, third person patch and we'll be able to play. I think, honestly, like, let's say you play Cyberpunk and it is what we think it is in first person. I'm going to play it probably two or three times through just to try different specs and different decisions and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we can suddenly play it in third person. It's going to be Brand great. new game. Yeah. Brand new game. You're yeah. not going to have to play it again, minimum twice, you know? I agree, so, yeah. That's going to be so and cool. Then, and then we know they've got at least one DLC planned, and just based on the way that, that CD Projekt Red do DLC, like I'm assuming you guys have played the Witcher DLC, right? Yep, yeah, I like, have as well. Serious bit of kit. that, like Those could have been, no joke, they could have probably charged you know, the regular $60 for each of those as standalone games. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Any one of them with a few tweaks could have been The Witcher 4 and The Witcher 5, right? Yeah. So they were that good, at least that quality. So, man, I just, I think it's going to be a, a, I think it's going to be a big fucking game. It's going to be so good. So, yeah. I'm looking forward to it, bro. I'm really looking forward to this game. Yeah. It's, it can't come soon enough. Yeah. Oh, Johnny Silverhand, get in me, get in me. Uh, <clears> that <throat> sounded really bad, a silver hand getting in me. That's awful. Hey, man, look, Keanu, <clears throat> no one's that straight. In it, no one's that straight. Right. I'm glad this is a safe space and I can say these right. things. Okay, yeah. that's right. <laughs> safe space. Right. You're the snowflake. You know, we're that's Marvel it. heroes now. That's it. Oh Jesus Christ! I forgot about them. Fucking <laughs> hell! Thanks for reminding me. Bloody hell! All right, let me read out Diogo's comment. The next one, Diogo, yeah. voiced by Troy Baker, obviously, as is everyone. Of um, thoughts on IGN summer of gaming event schedule? Uh, from what I've heard, it sounds like utter shit for most gamers, and is filled with a lot of indie titles or titles no one has ever heard of. I think it won't do too well. Have you heard about this uh, this summer games event schedule, bro? Uh, yeah, the last time we did this podcast. The last uh, time we spoke about it, right? <laughs> um, so, so what it on, is, is essentially is um, it's a, a schedule created by IGN and 
if you look at it purely from like the content and how much words are written there it looks like this huge 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 lineup of like multiple days of gaming announcements and gaming reveals back to back yeah but a lot of it is filled with their watch along parties of other people's announcements so nothing to do with ign at all um and they're going to do their like post show talks about it just random talks from people you really don't care about and um a lot of unannounced games unannounced games that are likely to be indie games that you're probably not going to pay too much attention to and are not really that excited for what's really really shitty about this though is that they're taking all of this information of other people's announcements that are doing completely independent of IGN and making it sound like it's their announcement? They're trying to make it sound like this is their event that they're putting on, even though they have absolutely nothing to do with it. Wait, are you telling me that IGN is just full of talentless hacks trying to live, you know, ride the coattails of others? No way. I know. Come I'm on. I'm coming out here. I'm saying saying some really big things here, some really big takes. But yeah. but this is it. It's really kind of shitty what they're doing over there. They um, have, probably have one or two announcements that uh, otherwise sure. weren't going to be announced anywhere else because yeah. obviously E3 is not happening. They need a stage, and IGN offered them that stage, but. They, they're really pretending like this is their event. Like, But there's a bunch of shit in there where it's just like, oh, um, PlayStation's doing an event. Yeah, we're going to do a discussion here afterwards. Yeah. So... I mean, so... Can, let me ask you a question. And Go I on. don't mean this to sound negative towards indie devs because I think they're super important. I think it's really important that they... Because uh-huh. I, th- I think, you know, those one-man projects often... Like, Nazi Zombies was a one-man project, right? That was basically yeah. an indie game that the guy happened to make while working with um it wasn't respawn who was uh, it activision who? activision that's it um and and everybody in the office was playing it and they just included it in the game you know yeah uh, in treyarch right treyarch and that was it yeah, that's yeah. it yeah, yeah um so functionally that's kind of an indie title right in a sense here's the thing i don't care yeah I, ju- I just don't get... Okay, and I can prove to you that no one else does. Steam runs sales all the time. I would love to see Steam's numbers now of everybody in lockdown and see if anyone's even playing those games that they got for 27p yeah. in, the, in the everyday rape your wallet sale. Because yeah. I bet they're still playing those same three games that they don't always play. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that isn't to say that indie devs shouldn't do what they're doing. I think they it's really important. Right? Pushes like the the art form and storytelling, all that stuff to new levels, right? I just don't care. I'm not your your audience and I'm your average Joe, right? I don't, unless it's something spectacular, that's I just... The, that's the problem with indie games. They, uh, like, they, there are some really, really good ones out there. For example, yeah. like, uh, Bright Burn, Bright Memory, sorry, the, yeah. uh, the one that we saw at the Xbox showcase, that was made by one man. I was like, wow that's fucking fantastic and whatnot but the reason why that's fantastic is because a lot of indie games they kind of blur together like there are a thousand and one 2d side scroller video games and they all look exactly the same in 16-bit art style and it's like oh my god another one and even if even if it's something that looks good it's hard to differentiate and hard for someone to go okay uh, I really, I'm looking forward to that. I'll, I'll pick that up when it comes out because when it comes right. out, could be you could get confused with the next two D sc- side scroller that's eighteen bit or something like that. Um, and also, it doesn't get the marketing because they're they're not big enough. That's exactly. because they're indie, right? So, so that's one thing. The other thing is, aren't we already doing the summer games fest? That's another. This is so. This is exactly how it went. Let me lay it down for you right here. So. E3 was rumoured not to be happening a while ago, and we didn't get the confirmation until quite recently. And I bet you IGM were like, we could we could host something here. We could pitch something. Maybe because we've got the camera equipment, we've got all the people, we've got the knowledge of like video games, like that. we've got the connections. We could do something here, and this could put IGN on the map. This could be what this could be our thing. And then when it got announced that uh, E3 wasn't happening, they were like, yes, go full steam ahead. We're doing this. Put the branding up. Make all the graphics, everything like that. Call up all the people and go ahead. And in between the time of them saying that and actually announcing it, 
Jeff Keighley, a person who actually does like games, a person who is genuine and people do love, came out with Summer Game Fest and came out with something better that they were going to do with yeah. actual announcements on his show. <laughs> right, exactly, because he actually cares. And, I mean, he has people on that, that we know, right? You know, that's what the problem with indie devs. I don't know indie devs. I know Tony Hawk. Yeah, yeah. Right? And that's a game I didn't even care about. I didn't even think I... I Unless you had specifically said the words to me, I never would have thought about it again, right? Yeah, and they probably and then, wouldn't have got people like the um, like uh, Tim Sweeney and the, the guys at Epic to do the Unreal 5 engine demo and whatnot. No way would IGN have been able to hook something like that. But Summer Games Fest did. Why? Because mm-hmm. they're actual like in the industry and they're respected and they're, they're loved. These guys are just trying to cling on to whatever they can find and uh, put their events around these uh, big gaming events and hope they can siphon off people to their website. That's yeah. what they're... And it's really kind of despicable and kind of stupid. I kind of really hate it. It really is. It's. It, I mean, even the name, It's. I feel like it's just... It's, it's Summer of Gaming, Summer Game Fest. Yep, yep. I feel like they're just trying to get you in because you think it's the big event you know it's shitty it is really shitty i I, i'm not i'm not excited for it i'm not really gonna tune into any of their stuff they'll they'll do what they always do with every like news game announcement or whatever they'll make an article on it and then if it pops up on my feed and i happen to scroll past it if it's something eh, i'll be like yeah okay cool no problem yeah the other thing is like i mean it's just i don't think this is going to be great for the indie devs either mainly because people are probably expecting this to be bigger than it is yeah, yeah. You know, that's why that's why real I say real, you know, bigger events are good for indie devs because they can siphon off attention because when people have already seen what they went there to see, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, Was it twelve minutes that gameplay that we saw at Xbox's event? Yeah. I cannot stop thinking about that. And it was probably yeah. partly to do with it being on the Xbox stage around a fantastic show and it being fantastic and different to what all the other games were offering and something like that. But which game were you there for? Exactly, exactly. Exactly. I was there for Cyberpunk. I was there for other Xbox titles yep. that were hopefully going to be shown off that it didn't exactly. get shown off. <laughs> you never, we never, neither of us would have watched it if we were like, oh, hey, Xbox is showing off all these titles you've never heard of before. Exactly. Right. And- and it's funny because IGN believe, they genuinely believe that they are as powerful as the brands of like PlayStation and Xbox, that they can put on event, an event with uh, with indie games and, and help them out and you know, give them a leg up. It's like, no one cares about anything that you say. Yeah, no, no yeah. one cares. No one cares about you. God damn um, it. So much yeah, fun. I mean, look, guys, let us know in the comments on the Discord if you think we're being a bit too harsh when it comes to this IGN thing. Personally, I think we're being pretty reasonable on it. Yeah. I think IGN's a bunch of hacks. They've lost touch. They have no idea about <laughs> the strength of their brand or what anyone wants, you know, uh, and kind of fuck them. Yeah. But other than that, like, getting indie devs together is great if you sprinkle them in between events that's going to keep people there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like have have a couple major things, and then in between, with good pacing, you show a cool indie game. That game, like twelve minutes, is going to have a lot more attention than it otherwise would have. But all indie games, like, I, it's not enough. There's no draw for me. So no, not at all, not at all. Um, do you want to read our next comment now? And just to be awkward, obviously, I've taken a few comment uh, questions and uh, peppered have, them in yeah. the way. So it's the next so one. I think- <laughs> Is the next one, is that Nerox? Uh, it's Sean's one, you got to read there. Sean's. Uh, yeah. What's your opinion on Halo Infinite at the moment, even if we don't know much about it? I'm not really the Halo guy. I mean, I'm, I'm, I like it because they do it very... Master Chief always has looked very cool to me. Good old Master Chef, he always looks very cool, but I don't know anything about him. But you know a lot more. How do you feel about Halo Infinite? I feel like I've been let down by a lot of Halo stuff. After Halo 3, let's say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Actually, I mean, that's not really fair. There's a couple of movies on YouTube. There's Forward Unto Dawn and I forget the other one. They're pretty good. They're actually really good. It might be The Fall of Reach, actually. There's a couple of books that are good. The Fall of Reach is a good book. Um, and they don't read. Obviously, I know. Who, who, who reads? If, Come if people, on, who reads? <laughs> if people are seeing him read these comments, but, you know, there's I a few good books and stuff. I just choose not to. <laughs> right, that's it. You choose not to. 
I mean, Halo Infinite, I want, goddamn, I want to, let's actually see something, right? I, I'll say this, it's not enough to make me get an Xbox. Mm. You know, mm. maybe in a couple of years I'll pick up an Xbox One X, you know, for really cheap and throw it in if it's backwards, you know, if it's compatible. But I'm not going to buy a, um, a Series X for just for Halo. I'm sorry, it's just, there's not enough else on it. Yeah. I want it to be good. We saw a trailer um, of Chief getting picked up from something. Like it, it's intriguing. I just feel like there's. I just feel like three four three don't really know what to do with them. Where before it was Bungie, and they, I mean, if they were, I don't know. If I was Bungie, I would have stuck with Halo personally, and then done Destiny later down the road. Mm. Um. They've been doing again, Halo for a long time. They they really wanted to get out to do to strut their stuff, you know. Yeah, and like one side of that argument, which I do take, is that Halo Four wasn't exactly good, right? And Bungie got out from it, and they brought out Destiny. Now Destiny had its own set of problems, you know, which was that this will be a five ten year game. Actually, no, it won't. You're gonna <laughs> make me pay full price for a game you're gonna call Destiny Two that's just a different few maps you know like and the load screens got down so yeah I, d I don't know man at the minute i'm kind of a big meh despite loving halo you know mm. I, let me see something show me something I why why xbox aren't showing this off as like their front runner yeah beyond me even if there's nothing even if it's not ready like start showing us the promo stuff you know it's so strange it should be at the ready point as well seeing as it's it said it was going to be a, a launch title for the uh for the xbox series x doesn't look like it you know exactly i feel like they may have jumped the gun on that it's going to be so embarrassing if they turn around and say mate well actually it's not ready just yet what if it is ready what if it is ready and they've just handled it this poorly you know that's even stupider that's like you yeah. need to slap them in the fucking head then that's what you need to do but tell tell me you can say with a hundred percent certainty that Microsoft and the suits running it aren't that stupid. Tell me, say it. Yeah, shit, I can't say it, that. I can't. Right, exactly. <laughs> they they might have that. Maybe they're like, oh, it's our. I bet. So this is. The, let's say it's ready. I bet they think Halo Infinite is their like ace. It's their Joker card, right? That as soon as Microsoft uh, Sony does something, like they can just pull out Halo Infinite and boom, they'll have the attention again. It's not gonna work. Yeah. It's not gonna work because there's nothing else to play. And I love, I love Halo. I'm such a big fan, and I'll be so hyped to see it. And I still won't buy their freaking console, you know? Yep. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. All right. Well, thanks for giving us that information, yep. there, Brusif. Thank you for your Halo, your official Halo Infinite uh, opinions, right there. You're yeah, there you are Halo go. correspondent. <laughs> again, again, this is one of those games I'd love to be wrong about. I'd love for it to come out and be incredible. People say, look, it's actually so good, you should consider buying a Series X. I'd yeah. love for that to be the case. But don't think uh, so. Our next question is from our boy Nirok. He says, hashtag Cars Movie Club. That is officially going in the uh, the Discord right there. That's going right there. Right, right. And he says, uh, since I'm a huge FPS fan, i got to ask, what's your favourite FPS game? What is your favourite FPS you know, Let's hear I, yours. I, I've got a... I have to say... Recently, so we had the list of the uh, the uh, PlayStation Five confirmed games that are that are coming out for the PlayStation Five. They're not they're not many surprises there. There's none like unannounced games or anything like that. But they did mention Battlefield Six, mm -hmm. and the last Battlefield, the last two Battlefields, is it Five and um, and Battlefield One? One. Right? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. They didn't blow my skirt up. The last good Battlefield that I played was uh, Battlefield Three and Battlefield Four. Those ones yeah. were just fantastic. I remember having we had a lot, lot of, fun of fun on those. A lot of fun. It was great. And when they, um, I think there was an investor call recently, and they were saying that they're going to go hard on Battlefield Six, and they're going to recapture the glory days of the uh, of Battlefield. And I mean, they're not going to say, "Now nah, we're just going to poop this one out." We really don't give a shit, you know. They're obviously right, going right. to say we're just phoning it in this time. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to say that, but I hope they do, and I hope I get that back because I had so much fun on on Battlefield. That and I mean, Call of Duty back in the day, I would love to see the. It's supposed to be a, a Black Ops soft reboot, which could be yeah. interesting because Black Ops was our favorite game that came out, uh, favorite Call of Duty that came out. Mm -hmm. That's the one we had the most fun on, yeah. Exactly. Um, obviously, Doom is a fucking fantastic one, but I'm going to say Battlefield. I think that's my favorite okay. first-person shooter. How about you? 
it's a tough one. I do think, you know, COD and Battlefield are definitely up there, especially because we always do the same thing where we'd get COD, do like three to six months into it, get so sick of complaining about it and move over to Battlefield every single time. Yeah, um, yeah. So I got a lot of good the, memories. Always on the those. pattern. <laughs> got a lot of good memories on those. Doom is great. I played Counter Strike 1.6 back in the day. I mean, I wasn't, didn't really love it, but it was good. Halo, man. Halo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some big shouts. Some big shouts. Goldeneye. Goldeneye, bruv. Yeah, oh at shit. Least the way I, at least the way I remember it. Yeah, the way we remember it, it's, go it's amazing. It's golden, yeah. in fact. Huh? I get it, golden eye, because it's golden. Oh, eye. boo. Golden, because it's golden gun, and golden mm. golden gun wasn't in that one, but it still had it in the game. It was strange. I don't know best. why. <laughs> what is your favorite FPS? Okay, so not the best. What's your favorite? Favorite? Apex Legends is good fun as well. Like I think, Ooh. I think it's a really good, fast-moving, basically Call of Duty. It's not my favorite, but it's good fun to play. I remember Overwatch was good. Apparently, it's yeah. not good anymore. People were apparently saying it's quite bad. I don't know why that is. I haven't played it in a while. But um, I think the reason why I liked Overwatch so much was that it was a bit like, it was a bit more fantastical, and also the voice lines in it were so catchy, and it was so great. Always catch us saying stuff like that. It's like, oh, break it down. I what's kind of Justice saying. reigns from above. Yeah. Yeah. Ra uh, what was it? Hi heroes never die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny that you picked a Lucio voice line because i literally only played lucio yeah um, i remember that achievement tell everybody about the achievement that you got that was like oh super yeah fucking so difficult. like it was more impressive back in the day like it within the first sort of six months of playing the game you know when things were still fresh but lucio had this achievement called the wall the floor is lava yeah and it was like a 0.01 percent of the people playing had it and you had to get three environmental kills while while wall riding but it also didn't say if they had to be in one go or not. And so I did eventually get it. It was <laughs> tough, though. Because I th I thought it had to be all three, you know, from it one go. Yeah, yeah. it was it was tough. Um, which I think it doesn't have to be. I think you can just get three environmental skills while yeah. riding a wall yeah. throughout the space of a game. But So Overwatch was fun. I only played one guy, but it was fun. Um, <laughs> you know, I think, I think favorite shit. I think I'm gonna say I'm gonna have to say Call of Duty is multiple, you know. Like I had a ton of fun on on Modern Warfare, you know, COD Four, World at War was good. Mm. Just raping people in like MW two. Oh yeah. Blops one with the boys, like I think I think I'll say Call of Duty. I think. There's no wrong answers, man. There's so many there's so many good ones. Yeah, I and this is your favourite one, so it's all about you. It's all about you. Yeah. I think I think I'll say Call of Duty. I think that's the one I put the most time on, and there's probably a reason for that. So I'll say COD. Yeah, that's a, that's a decent anyway. point. Yeah, you put the yeah. most time, although, in there has to be a reason for that. Although you, have, Battlefield's a big shout, man. We've it's, had some good times on Battlefield. It is and the really Revolution, good. mate. Not not bad at all. Revolution. Oh my god, the skyscrapers falling. Right, oh. right. That was so sick. Or breaking the dam or whatever. Or um, flying a helicopter directly into the ground. Oh, that was good. That right. was good time. Right. Good times. Um yeah, that's a tough question. Nirok, what's your favorite your favorite yeah. FPS? Um He's gonna okay. say Doom, it's Nirok. It's Nirok, bro. Come on. Yeah, maybe. Um all right, a question from me, which I wrote in case I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Are you still playing that NVIDIA? Now service, whatever it was yeah, called. You know, G the, NVIDIA the GeForce Stadia, now. Big Brother. That's it. Yeah. So uh, for those of you guys that don't know, NVIDIA GeForce Now, it's a service by NVIDIA. It's a competitor to uh, Stadia, essentially, where you can play PC games, anything that's on the Steam Market Store, uh, on their service on any laptop or a computer or device and whatnot, any device that supports it. Um I played it on my MacBook and it was a ton of fun. So good, so smooth. I barely felt any lag. It was so, so cool to play. And it was amazing to play games in the highest quality settings uh, on my crummy MacBook Pro that can't even play normal games and whatnot. <laughs> uh, I say crummy, but it's basically holding the entire of conversations together. It really is. <laughs> so good, Don't good let guy. Don't you guy. say that. That was your shit. Cover it, ears. Cover it, ears. Um, I stopped playing it for a very big reason. So a bunch of games started to get removed from the service without notice, without any sort of explanation, no no statement, no nothing like that. 
Now, for those of you guys who don't know how the service works, is that NVIDIA make a, a server where you can play any game that you want, any game that you own on Steam or on the Epic Game Store or wherever the store is, and that's it. They don't have any hand in the game, they don't have any hand in anything else, they just allow you to play on their thing, as if you've, you've got a, a high-end PC, but it's just running remotely. A bunch of uh, publishers removed access to their games on this service. So all of the Call of Duties, uh, a bunch of like, Activision games, a bunch of other games have all been blocked on this service without any reasoning, without any statement or nothing, and that really, really sucks. And you cannot get refunds for these games after you've purchased them. The only reason why this is happening, you're probably asking, why are they doing that if they're just, I mean, they're getting customers, that customers probably wouldn't have been able to buy this PC game because they don't have a good yeah. enough PC for it. It's purely because NVIDIA are charging £5 a month to use their service and NVIDIA aren't giving any of that £5 a month to the publishers. The publishers mm -hmm. want to double dip. They want to buy. They want you to buy the game, and they also want to take a cut of the money that Nvidia are are getting as well to play that game, which is absolutely scummy, absolutely shitty, and typical greedy publishers trying to get more money when they don't deserve it. It's yeah. really, really crappy right there, and that's the that reason sucks. why I stopped buying it. It's it's really stupid because. It, beforehand, like I said, there's no way that these customers would have been able to buy that game because they don't have a PC rig. Like, I don't have a rig to play these games on. All I have is my MacBook. And I yeah. bought some of these games because of this service. And that's not good enough for them. They don't, they're not good enough getting a brand new customer. They want extra money on top of that. And that's yeah. really fucking shitty. It really is. I'm not playing the service just because of that fact. And it's, it's really shit because NVIDIA are doing a good thing. And the publishers are, are fucking with them. The publishers yeah, are like really fucking with them. I think it's important to say, like, you like the service, yeah. but you can't. It's not really viable, not because of the service, but because of the the publishers. So they ruined a great thing. They did. They did. I'm, I'd be double dip. If I was to continue playing, I'm risking my money. I'm risking my enjoyment as well. I go buy the game, and then tomorrow I could turn it on, and it's like, yep, that's been removed from the service. It's like, yeah. Yeah, okay. it sucks. There we go. And I'll have no say about it and I have nothing to do. It's that really, really shitty, but that's why I'm not playing it anymore. Otherwise, it would have been great. It would have been great. Yeah. Let me read our next... Uh, did you have any questions about that at all, by the way? I feel like no, I summed no, it quite nicely. I, it was just... Because that I was actually considering it, you know, as like instead of maybe getting the PS5, yeah, I could do £5 a month and play Cyberpunk in, you know, super high... Res, you know, ultra yeah. settings kind of deal, right? That was a, yeah. one of the things I was angling towards. But if it, if we're not going to be able to do it, you know, it's just too risky. I couldn't recommend it to anyone. I couldn't right. recommend it to anyone. Let's read out our next question from our boy Dan. What is your earliest gaming or, or and or slash uh, internet memory? Ooh, um, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> dial up, <laughs> dial up internet. Ooh, boy. And loading um, in loading in pictures at like one pixel per hour. <laughs> mate, yeah, like the, the booby JPEG where it's like going line <laughs> by line and you're waiting like it's taking you forty five minutes and you're looking behind you to see if mum's coming down the stairs or something. Oh, yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah. Christ, hurry up, please, 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 please. Oh, there's a nipple, there's a nipple, it's good enough. That's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, uh gaming wise though, it's um it's Mario Kart in the mate, in the that, that Rainbow Road. Oh the anger. Getting taken the anger. Out, getting, <laughs> Getting taken out by a freaking red shell or blue <laughs> shell, like when you're right near you. Oh, mate. oh boy, there's not enough words in the in the dictionary to describe the anger that you feel right. when when that happens. God damn it! Or you get in, you're driving, you get struck by lightning. Boop, 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 you know. Oh, oh no, that's probably one of the reasons why I don't play multi much multiplayer games anymore. I'm just like, do you know what? I just can't stand being butt fucked. I'm gonna play single player games and then and then put it on grounding. That's it, grounded. That's all I care about. Right, because you don't <laughs> want to get butt fucked. I um, I don't know, man. Okay, what? So what? I I think we're pretty similar, like N64 type stuff, yeah, Mario yeah, Kart, yeah. Goldeneye. Cool. Let me ask you a question off the back of that. Thank you, Dan, for giving me the idea. It's gone. It, it left my head. No way. No. Oh, got it. Got it back. Got it oh, back. We're fine. God. We'll just oh, edit Jesus. it out. No one will ever know. No one will um, ever know. Okay, I'll remember that. Okay. 
PvP versus PvE, like playing through the game versus playing with people, why do you not like multiplayer? Why are you not a big multiplayer guy anymore? Because you used to be. We used to, we used to jam a ton of Call of Duty, for example. Yeah. So because what is it? The what whole it? the whole idea with PvE, sorry, PvP, I should say, it just comes down to ruining the other person's fun. In my opinion, that's what it comes yeah, down to. That's why I love it. That's why it's my favorite part of any game experience. <laughs> Not even you just, joking. You Not just want to see the world burn. That's what you want, don't yeah. you? <laughs> I, I, like, for example, Destiny and whatnot. I touched, just touched the PvP uh, portion of it. And I was like, fucking hell, man. All it is is just you killing me and destroying my enjoyment of this game. And me killing you and destroying your enjoyment of the game. I could yeah. be playing raid missions. I could be playing uh, the, the strikes and whatnot. And just destroying all the... The, the enemies in that and having fun and getting loot at the end of it. Mm -hmm. And I just went, why would I ever leave this? Why would I ever leave this? Go over there in your Crucible matches and, and just play your games over there. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Just stay over there in your quarantine zone and don't infect my game. So right. I'm cool with uh, with that. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I feel about it, yeah. Some of my best, most fun, most fond gaming memories are PvP stuff, man. Like... um. I got so I was it's all I play really if I do MMORPGs which I haven't touched for years cuz I'm an addict but um <laughs> like World of Warcraft and Warhammer Online I got some my genuinely probably my top moments in like multiplayer games are in those You pronounced it addict but you should have you, you it's pronounced virgin It's not not what I said <laughs> Same sort of same, yeah, thing, same, same thing, thing same thing same thing yeah yeah um <laughs> Yeah, man, I just I just love it for the exact reason that you said. It's 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 not just about ruining the other person's time. It's about being able to rub their face in it, even if it doesn't ruin their day. <laughs> just be like, yeah, but you'll always know. You'll always know you lost to me. You know. Yeah, shit. You yeah, know what? That's a it. that's a good point. I didn't think about it that way. There has been other moments, like say GTA and whatnot, which does have a terrible, you know, ruining other people's lives moments in there. But th there are moments in that where you're like, do you know what? I could um. Uh, we've, we've had some good fun. We've had a, a moment here where we wouldn't have had, obviously, in a PvP, so PvE area and whatnot, where you've had a mate and you've done something ridiculous and it's it's hilarious. Or, like, tell me this isn't the most satisfactory thing. Maybe more so for me, but do you remember in Black Ops 1 they added in the death uh, mic? So you kill a oh, guy and you could hear him for, like, three seconds? Yeah. It's like, motherfucker, I swear to yeah. God I should... <laughs> this guy with the Olympia again... <laughs> like, tell me that wasn't the best bit about the game. Yeah, shit, that was great. That was right? really good. It oh. really was, and it's that. It's that. It's that brief moment that is like for me just the, the point of gaming. You know, I don't get me wrong. I freaking love The Witcher yeah. and God of War, but there is something about killing a dude for the seventh time. You know, like. You, you've like you've been in a room. You're not camping because you're there for the objective, right? Right. Killed this guy three times. You know he's coming back again, and so you go out the window, wait for him, come around behind him, and stab him. <laughs> you know, to really rub salt in the wound, so that he knows that you, at every possible outcome, are just better than him. Yeah. You know, and you hear that despair. Like, yeah, I love it. I, it feeds me. Oh boy. <laughs> Next question. Go ahead. This one's uh, you, this one's on you. The last question. Uh, what from Jas? Yes. Um. Uh, bit of a personal. It's not personal, Jas. A bit of a personal <laughs> question this time, boys. Um, seeming uh, seeing as you're both obviously getting the PS5 for obvious reasons, what game from the current gen will you play first on the PS5 to take advantage of this insane SSD and visuals? Um, I'm sure you already know mine. It's Final Fantasy VII Remake. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Go oh, on, bro. Boy. I... Ooh, 
able to take advantage of the SSD. I, to, the thing is, is that I, there's a couple of games that I want to try out, but not because I want to play them, but I just want to see how much of a difference it makes. So yeah. I want to try GTA because that's famous for having the worst loading screens in the world. I want yeah. to try Destiny because, again, the loading screens into the planets and whatnot are so fucking awful. Brutal. I want to, I want to try those, but I don't think I want to go back to play them just because I'm on a PlayStation 5. The games that I want to play on the PlayStation 5 are the ones that I hope, I hope they have next gen patch updates for. So like God of War, I hope they have like a update for. I hope that PlayStation have come to them and said, guys, do you know what would be really good for PlayStation? Is if Horizon Zero Dawn, if uh, the um, God of War and Death Stranding and all yeah. of those first party games or second party games have next gen updates. And I want to go, I want to jump in to play these games again under a new ray tracing cool technology light thing i really want to i really want to play all those games if they do have anything like that straight away i'm playing god of war again i'm doing a whole let's play start to finish new new gen system just to see what that's like that game with ray tracing hells yeah oh hells yeah that i mean god of war is a, a great one i think i don't know how much better the witch is gonna look mm mm I feel I feel like the the game with the more with the most potential for visuals is God of War over yeah. The Witcher, although The Witcher is still stunning. Yeah, P- probably those games. To be honest, like imagine running around Tucson in um, like oh, 4K, that you gorgeous know, just area. Oh god, and just fast travel. Like you click the button and now you're there. You know. Yeah, I think if Jedi Fallen Order could get an update, that's a beautiful game as well. I'd love to Mate. see lightsabers in that light. You know. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to see what look what falling through the the planet looks like in 4K <laughs> and getting ragdolled up to the ceiling as if you're being held there by Darth Vader for no reason. Are you trying Can't to wait. tell me that the the Jedi Fallen Order has bugs? Is that what you're trying to? I will not I mean, have this blasphemy, sir. I've heard it rumored online. Yeah, okay. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> No, I mean, those are my picks there anyway. The, the, do you know what the the funny thing is? You've said as well, like you don't really like dipping into your old cache of games, like yeah. really going too far. Whereas I fired up Final Fantasy IX a while ago. Looks the exact same. That might be the first game I have to play on the PS5. Oh, yeah. Final Fantasy f- IX, original graphics, using like the the PS5's basically gone into sleep mode. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like, and the PS5 turns on. And the fan isn't even on because it's not required. <laughs> right, right, right. It just it just lets the TV power the section that's needed. You know, just just pulls it through the HDMI. <laughs> I love that. That'll be your first game. It's like, right, guys, to test out the new power of this brand new machine, Final Fantasy IX, the original graphics. Let's go, boys! That's right. Woo! That's right. Uh, yeah, I th- I think yeah. I mean, if any look, if anybody else has, ooh. Do you know what? Silly, silly, silly. Why not? Why we, Why are we not going to test out The Last of Us Two or Ghost of Tsushima or Cyberpunk? Why are we thinking God of War? That, that's the thing. I we don't know yet if there's going to be like an update for that. If there is, hundred yeah. percent, I'm going for Last of Us, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, go, um, or, Ghost uh, of Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk for me. Yeah. Ghost of Ghost and Cyberpunk. They're going to be so cool, and um, we expect there's going to be uh, an update for. Uh, cyberpunk for, because they said there's one for the xbox so hopefully for some reason i feel like they are basically next gen games do you know what yeah, i mean yeah yeah i know what you Whereas, mean it's a feeling right right like like the witcher 3 and god of war 4 they're ps4 games yeah. this lot they feel like they're, they're i'm gonna remember them in 10 years time as ps5 games do you know yeah. what, you know yeah. so which is why i didn't even think about them <laughs> but I, I bet i bet those four Mate, and Valhalla and all that stuff, I bet they look stunning. I mean, I bet Valhalla looks stunning in 4K at 29 FPS. Yeah. You know, because it's never going to break above 30. Um, (laughs) That was some troubling news, boy. Yeah, Yeah, which game, I guess, probably of those four, I reckon, I mean, I'm going to do Cyberpunk and Ghost. I reckon would be the two I would look at. Didn't even consider them. Yeah. So I those think, two, I'll say. I think say. Cyberpunk in 60 FPS is going to be something magical. Mate. It's going to be something mate, magical. Drooling. God. Um, Can't wait for good that. Good question, man. Good question. That was a good question. Good questions. 
All right, that is actually all of our questions, actually. Everyone, thank you for writing into our Discord server. Thank you for making these uh, the end of this podcast. That is such such good conversation. I really love you guys. You, you guys are so cool. Um, only announcement, really, is that we're going to be doing, as I said many times, the uh, the reveal event watch-along with the bros on the Combro Plations channel. Uh, you guys should definitely have that uh, have that bookmarked. Wait, because the... the the uh the live stream link is actually live right now i thought i'd do it nice and early to get the promo going for this so everyone's all excited yeah. to get the hype train going and uh yeah we will see you guys then is there anything else you want to want to say bros if um oh guys genuinely if you're subscribed to the main channel the conversation channel go there and hit the notification bell and select it to all because yeah. we know for a fact now and i've completely forgotten in every video to tell you we are like genuinely black marked and there's a reason you're not seeing our uploads mm -hmm. hit hit the notification but we need to actually remind everybody to do that in the video this isn't like one of those oh just hit the notification bell smash the like button no like for real you may it may not come to your sub boxes yeah yeah so so we i forgot about that i'm really sorry no, should, it's all right. been, like, the first <laughs> announcement <laughs> all right um yeah let us know uh if there's anything else you want us to cover in the meantime obviously we've got our right into the show we've got our video topic suggestions channels and stuff like that in the discord server click the links in the description and yep. uh yeah we'll catch you guys we'll catch you guys next time yeah, yeah we will all right, genuinely right, the discord for... greatest place on the internet seriously no joke yeah check it really, out really is cool all right yeah. man thanks for being here bro yeah you too virtual right. handshake virtual handshake right there, there. and now cool outro music <laughs> <laughs>